Hello, calling the meeting to order. Good evening, everybody. Um, this is the, for the sake of recording, I'm going to give an announcement. Um, we are being recorded by RCTV Studios, um, public access channel 31 on Verizon, 9 on Comcast. Oh, sorry, government, that would be 33 on Verizon, 22 on Comcast. If you want to um, watch this, um, if you want to watch this hearing again, this whole night, if you want to watch it over and over and over again, you can go look at it. I think it's on YouTube um, if you haven't seen it. Um, thank you for coming out tonight. I'm going to ask members of the public, if they haven't already, to please sign in. Um, there's usually a sign-in sheet. Chuck, is that set up? Yeah, I've been passing it's it ready. around, so I think... Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, um, I want to have record that you're here, because it's important. Um, and at this point, I think we can dive into the first hearing. Um, We're going to open Notice of Intent um, 270-0714. And 139 and 149 are Howard Street, Map, map 10, Lots 75 and 76 and 77. Um, owned by Infrastructure Holdings, LLC. Um, that public hearing is now reopened and is being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. For this hearing, um, the applicant's not present. Is that true, Chuck? No, they weren't. Okay. Um, typically, we receive information from the applicant. Um, and reports from our administrator, which I believe we have tonight. Um, we are going to discuss the matter, um, and then we will give the public an opportunity to ask questions, um, which should be directed to the chair. And when, uh, as you know from before, when you pose a question um, to the chair, please give your name and address. Um, and at this point, let's introduce yourself, starting with Dave, please. David Pinnett. Carl Sacone. Anika Scanlon, acting chair. Michael Flynn, Chuck Cironi, Conservation Administrator. Okay, so um, to start, we had site visits and we had additional things to review for this meeting. So why don't we go over those? So the, yeah, where we left it at the last meeting is we were looking for an additional quote uh, for, uh, you know, to have at least three to choose from. Okay. And the commission felt that they needed that. Um, this is not a very big project, so some of these uh, shops didn't want to take on such a small project. I sent uh, a request out to CDM Smith, and they considered it, but then it, uh, came back with that they're just too busy to take it on. So they sent me a letter uh, with that. So we're still left with the two original quotes and one okay. Uh, or one non-quote. So, okay. coming up with three. So, uh, in front of us we have um, a quote from, let me see, it's Matt. It's Matt. So we have one from Horsley and Witten Group. Right. And the other one is... Matt Straussberg. I can't see his name on this one. And he's uh, at wetlands.com and he's uh, known by MACC mm -hmm. and in the Haverhill area. And he uh, gave you a quote, and I'm sure you all looked at it. And they have the one from Wolsey Witten also. I'm sure you looked at that also. Uh, so I don't know. It's up to you guys to start discussing this. All right. Um, okay. Do, does anybody have any comments about these two quotes at this point? We've, I've reviewed them. Um, yeah, I, I think one of my comments was I think the uh, 
the wetland strategies and solution from Mass Strasburg was, in my opinion, I thought it was a little bit low from what I expected them to do, and I thought the storm water would add more to it than his estimate. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I think um, I thought the Horsley Witten group. Um, Estimate, and it's too bad we only had um, two, but we tried. We tried to get some. It's just, like you were saying, it's just a, the level of effort for this project doesn't attract um, a lot of um, bids. So, um, you know, I think the Horsley Witten um, estimate, you know, hit what we were looking for. Um, and had the tasks we were looking for mm -hmm. and and you know they've as you've mentioned before and I witnessed they've run workshops at the MACC conferences which is the annual uh, wetlands education conference for put on by the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissioners um, and members of conservation commissions across the state get a chance to take workshops with professionals to come up to speed with what's going on and uh, what they need to know to be effective in administrating the wetland protection act so um so and i guess the other thing that i noticed about uh, matt strasburg uh, he didn't understand how he was going to get the uh storm water done it wasn't part of his Let's go it, it seems it's like part of scope. Well, okay. He's going to review it, but it's not part of uh, his knowledge base. Yeah, see, he's a wetland. I mean, he's, he's a, a wetland, wetland scientist. He seems completely capable of doing the wetland piece of this, but I don't know. You know I'm familiar with Horsley Witten uh, and what their capabilities are. They have multiple staff that could look at both the wetland piece and the civil piece. I, I guess I just question whether. Uh, and and I, well, I should, uh, question, I, he hasn't really identified to me anything in here that indicates that he has the capability of actually looking at the stormwater piece. And I, I know that's going to be a piece that is going to be uh, a lot of concern here that, that I know that the, the community has already uh, brought up as you know, issues. So I, I want to make sure we have someone that is really capable of evaluating that. Right. So. Yep. So th this is actually going to be run by an engineer too. Janet Bernardo is uh, had called me a couple times to find out where we are with the um, with the review process, mm -hmm. and it's going to be her job to do the reviewing. So she's PE. Yeah. Um. Dave, how do you have any comments on the? Oh, I just estimates? had. I just had the concern that we hired one firm that was going to be able to do both the hydrology and the wetland inundation. So I just have the same, I guess I have the same feelings that Mike has. Okay. We have, you know, the same firm that has, can do both. Yeah, I would, I would agree. It seems more beneficial that way. Okay. Well, we seem pretty unanimous in thought about this. So, um, Chuck, do we need to take a, a formal vote? Yeah, I want to take a vote just to make sure that you uh, feel that, uh, in your opinion, to do the job correctly for what you've asked for. I mean, it's under five thousand bucks, so it's yeah. it's you know just best business yeah. practices we're going to be applying yeah. to. Um, that uh, it's Horsley Witten, I believe, is you going to uh, issue the contract to them or make them the vendor. I make a motion that, based on a review of the proposals and the qualifications of the proposals, that we uh, we contract uh, Horsley Witten to perform the work at the peer review work at Howard Street. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Um, I'll now open up questions from the public. Um, anybody have any questions about uh, regarding uh, the Howard Street project? Yes, sure. Chuck Castelluccio, 62 Westcroft Road. Okay. Um, I guess a couple of things. I, I just want to know kind of the, the timing and the path forward from here. If the contract is issued, when is the work going to be due? Uh, is there going to be something in writing that they provide first and then do a presentation? Is the presentation going to be before the committee? 
uh, you know, is it going to be time to respond to that, and et cetera? Yep. Um, Chuck, do you want to address that? I actually don't have uh, a write up on what we sent out to them, but I'd be glad to send you that. Um, so I can't even read it off there. Does anyone have um, the scope? I the scope. I have the scope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's here. The RFP? Yeah. I didn't see you. Uh, site inspection with uh, the commission and the applicant, a review of the notice of intent, submittal of written analysis, the applicant's wetland delineation, including the proposal drainage design, groundwater and stormwater modeling, necessary to, uh, to include additional information needed uh, likely to affect the project on the adjacent homes and any other aspect of the project deemed sufficient to its overall success. Um, meets with the engineer and the conservation administrator to review analysis, presents analysis to the conservation commission during a public hearing. Um, if the results of the analysis is asked, uh, if the results of the analysis is to ask the applicant to make uh, significant revisions to the proposed work, the consultant might then be called in to review um, the revised material and submit additional comments. That's what we've asked for. You can, are you okay with me? Uh, sure. I can get you another copy. I mean, if it's public record, it's sure. fine to hand out. In terms of a schedule, though, um, we need, I'm sure, some sort of. Well, I'll have to get the schedule. As soon as I call the people at Horsley Witten, they'll put it on their calendar and start telling me some dates. Yeah. And they contract directly with the applicant? No. Remind me how this works. We we've will make them a vendor right. of the town. The applicant has to deposit the check, and we will draw funds from okay. that. Okay. okay. That so we have to set the contracts up and get the payment in place. Yeah, and that may, I mean, we might be another three weeks with that, maybe more. They've, they've indicated they want at least two weeks um, from the time they receive all the data to the hearing, I, my guess is by the time we get a site visit scheduled, it's probably going to be more like three, but uh, add, add yeah. to even that, so. I mean, it would be a good time right right in April, middle of April. Yeah. Which is actually good timing. Interesting. For, yeah, yeah. And, and for evaluating enough, They this. did recommend that the ground not be frozen for the review, so. Right, so. Let's see. So we're proceeding, and, and stay tuned. So are they at the at the end of their evaluation? Do they provide something in writing first before they do a presentation? I think there's a couple stages in in that job description. Um, you know, a site visit. You know, they prepare some information. Their, their they scope, attend a meeting. Their scope is to submit. Uh, Written analysis. Written analysis. Uh, right. and then we'll discuss of it. it. Yeah. Five, five days prior to the, the so will be included as part of the packet for that meeting. Yeah, their their tasks are site inspection, review the notice of intent, write an analysis, have a working session, and then attend a hearing. So those are their five tasks. Will the written analysis be available to everyone to review? Um, only if it's part of the public record, and I, I assume, forgive me, It'll become part of the public the record when it comes to the meeting. Right. And at that time, it will be available to you. Well, as part of the packet, right? I mean, as soon as, I think, I, I'm going to check, and I understand what you're asking. So let me get back to you. I have your email. Yeah. All right. Um, not sure it has to come to a meeting before we could, uh, give it out as public record. Yeah, I mean, it's just like yeah, if we I'd get like, a, I would check. On yeah, I, I think we should check, but it's just like if we get a plan set, right? A plan set doesn't have to come to public meeting before we give it out. I, I just want to make sure that we have time to review it ourselves yeah. before it gets yeah, approved we, and it goes through. No, no, you, you'll, this is not something that's going to come in as a presentation and get stamped that night. That's not going to happen. Okay. okay. So, yeah, we, we yeah. have no intention of, of, you know, you've presented your your, your expertise and understanding of the project and you know we understand your concerns and your input so I used to in a different town as soon as we sent it out to the Commission it was available 
to the public. Yeah. I, j could you just check with the town clerk and just make sure I that think that is like a little different in every town, but I, I, um, mean, I want to do this <coughs> legally and lawfully and make sure we. We'll just confirm. Yeah. We, yeah. No, no, I don't have a problem because I understand what you're saying. When when something comes into the counter and we accept it, it's a public record. Because one of, the, one of the challenges sometimes in the past with um, a third party review, somebody that we've used kind of working for us but paid by the applicant, mm -hmm. is there may have been maybe revisions. Maybe we do a technical review and have some questions and maybe they, I don't, I don't see that in there as, as an iteration in their work product. So, because I think this is, this is a complicated but it's a, it's a fairly small project. So I think the expectation of, of what the report's going to be is kind of thought about. So I don't think that there's going to be it's, there's going to be a lot of technical challenges between conservation and this, but I don't know if... But the other thing is to it that that's totally disregarding what the, the applicant also would say as well. And anything that they have to bring to the table has to be brought out in open meeting. So yes, absolutely. So you know, yeah, at that point, yeah. you know, you I have agree, to have a yeah. meeting where uh, the the developer and the the third party are going to present their findings. Yeah. And then the developer is going to take what the the uh, uh, third party review takes, and they're going to need some time, perhaps, you know, to do their findings as well. Um, so. But it's, it's not something that, like I said, is going to come in one night and just uh, <coughs> be accepted or voted on. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, um, any other questions from the public? No? Okay. Thank you for coming out. Um, do I have a motion to continue? Motion to continue NOI 270-0714 Howard Street. A second? Are all seconded. Second. All those in favor? To April 10th, to 2019. April 10th. Okay. Okay. All right, 410. It continues. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I think we ran into that with uh, Randall Road. Right. And it yeah. was but it is what it is. If it's sent it right out, then it's going right out. Right. Yeah. Right. You just run that past the purchasing agent and Gene. Um, uh, yes. Go ahead. Before we start the just just in line with finding another. Did, do your old friends do? Um, um, a little bit. There was a. There was a. There were a couple people who who did that. They're now officially in Reading. I saw that. Oh. I know. As good neighbors, they may have been someone we at least should think about in the future. Yeah, well, it's too bad we've, we voted on it. Yeah, so. well, I know yeah. that's I figured I'd wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> um, plus, I might, having worked with there before working relationships with them, I don't know if I'd have to recuse myself. Well, I mean, I mean would you say we should have included a whole, uh, what's what's the the Samson? Samson? Yeah. I mean, I, I know their capabilities. Mm. Who does their wetland stuff? I don't know who does it now. But they, they were into... They They've had, done some. They've done a little bit. I, I don't... Because we talk about them like into that. bang engineers. That's Yeah, they well, I mean, would be really good for this, this, the drainage. Yeah, yeah the drainage part would be great. CDM yeah. Smith would have been great, too. I mean... Yeah, it didn't work out. Fun. Well, I figured I'd just ask. Yeah. Considering they are new, I'll, uh, I'll ask out of curiosity myself. Is, I mean, I think Horsley and Witten is, I was happy. They're really good for a We're going to get a solid yeah, report. Was, I've I'm got very confidence. Happy they said they wanted to take this on. I, I'm very familiar with them. And, uh, yeah. It's, it's going to help having their technical knowledge to hash out the issues for that site. So. Well, let's, uh, let's move on. Where's the, all right. Um, so we need to, I don't need to read anything for for Kylie Drive, right Chuck? For Kylie Drive is just a, a plan change. Plan change. Uh, John McGee is here and at the last meeting we uh, had the plan on the board and we asked for uh, some additional plantings. Yep. Carl 
Mm -hmm. Ask for some additional planning. So I didn't send this out to Carl again because you know we did we made a request and it looks like that they've been the request is uh, they just shut yep. this off. We put you a little earlier in the schedule uh -huh. <laughs> tonight. So thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. We received this. So you did get the new copy, which uh, was my interpretation of what uh, you guys had requested last meeting, um, with some modifications to some um, some of the plant sizes, some additional plants um, in a couple of different locations, a couple of trees added. Um, I'm hoping that that was essentially what you were looking for. Uh, okay. Um, I had a question Is it me? <laughs> after all this it's such a complicated plan mm -hmm. that I you know I'm looking at all these different colored dots and I'm trying to just picture in my mind what it's gonna look like when it's done mm -hmm. you know what I mean um, and there was one thing that was kind of um, missing to me a little piece of information I, I wasn't sure about so I just thought I'd ask um, and that was for the, for the, um, you know, in no way do I want to choke out the plan that's presented, mm -hmm. but until some of the, um, what's there comes to full maturity, is, do you, and it's just an open question here, do you think it would be beneficial to do, throw down like a wetland seed mix or a, some sort of herbaceous cover? Just like a... Just seed along that bank as well, just kind of a wildflower mix or something like I don't that. Know, just, just within, I, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, you know, because sometimes, you know, I'm going to ask you, put you on the spot, Carl, spontaneously, because yeah. you're a little more experienced with how these develop. And, um, you know, just to kind of prevent it from growing up lawn, mm -hmm. you know, and just make, establish it as a, as, as like a buffer area. That's just the question I had. So on the screen right now is last uh, meeting's plan. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna put on the screen right next is the new plan that John uh, brought to the commission. Is the, everything on the inside of the 35 foot line, is that gonna be sawed? Essentially, yes. Yep. Or seed, I should say. It'll probably just be hydro seed, something okay. like that. And then what will be inside or outside the 35 in the new proposed planting? Um, I was just assuming kind of some mulch, just essentially loom and um, the plants. But if you wanted to add some sort of seed mix, I think we probably could. I mean, mulch is, um, mulch is an aesthetic. Um, it has an aesthetic use and not necessarily... I mean, when naturally occurring, it's got a wetlands use, it's got a habitat use. Um, so I, I'm just throwing it out there. What, what are other people's ideas or thoughts on that? Because we're also talking about, you know, we'd sort of have to de define general zones. And, you know, and I would say, I would suggest as a first pass within the 35 foot. Um, only just kind of along not not necessarily along the as we go up into the drainage area and all that you're kind of thinking more along I'm just thinking bottom within line. 35 foot um, to kind of aid the transition between the uh, the lawn that's good that's either existing or is going to be there mm -hmm. to just be some sort of um, natural vegetation change barrier type thing mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're saying when it's seeded, it'll walk into the 35 yeah. naturally, which would probably happen. I'm just, I don't know if it would choke out, I mean, I think it would choke out the ferns over on the far right corner, the yellow dots. Don't you think? I possibly choke them out. Ferns are pretty voracious. And okay. They're going to probably do really well in kind of a, there's a little can of, is there, this is a far, far line, pretty much? I, I pop. If you don't mind, catch me up here. Last, la, last meet, I, I wasn't wasn't able to attend last meeting, but last meeting, 
a, a planting plan was proposed. We recommended some or asked for some changes. What were the changes that we asked for? Put what trees we, and yeah. then larger size plants. Trees and marginal plants as well. Right. right. So the river birch, the big blue yeah, circles, the nice right. blue. Um, right. and I think the white, the white pine. pine. White pine over the, the right. Green. Another thing, I did have a question that I asked Chuck. Um, there is a white pine already there in, in essentially that location. It's about seven feet tall. I don't know if you want me to plant yet another one, but um, I sent him a photo of, of a plant, of a white pine that was there. Look healthy. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, I, I mean, it seems like we were, so I, I, I'm going off of what my recollection of this site was when the old, old plan was before us, but I mean, we're getting a lot of plantings out of this. We are right. getting a lot of plantings. Oh, okay. right. yep. Yeah. I'm very happy. I, I guess my first look yeah. with, with what's yeah. being shown, I seem to be very happy with what's what's being proposed. I just want to make sure. You see, yeah, there's yeah. over 50 yeah. plants there. So. Yeah. So. Um, if you look at this, Mike, you can actually see it's in the light gray. The old planting plant is superimposed underneath this plant. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Underneath, yeah. Underneath. So it's this. You know, it's a substantial difference, but I think it's very adequate for what's proposed here for the current site. The only thing that, you know, you mentioned that, you know, the seed mix, and <coughs> I know that the last time we went out there, um, these uh, peripheral areas, you know, if you're going to do some planting in there, it's pretty bony. So I would think you're going to have to put some kind of yeah, loom. Yeah, some loom down some, there. Well. Yeah, because it's... Mulch will... Grass uh, can't grow. It's really... It's yeah, out there. yeah, just... He's doing, you do a lot. Yeah. yeah, I just yeah. don't want. Um, I just don't want lawn. I just don't want lawn, yeah. lawn to go uh, straight. Yeah, I, mean, well. I, I, I hope that if it keeps that. growing in the river over the next ten years, the line keeps creeping. Anyway, yeah. Like you know, so, I, yeah. So to, I, I, guess, I think to add to what might might need to know is the fact that John reduced the scope of the house. I can tell. I mean, put the yeah. driveway on yeah. the, the whole project. No pool. Yeah. From you know and. <laughs> And it's, it's much to, more even to add to that that extensive planting plan from that Sudbury group we didn't ask for we asked you know that was just presented as part of the product it was accepted as mitigation it was right totally qualified more so than we even needed right. to do this project and and I think when John was kind of getting to this point he said to himself He's really, he's really made this thing more acceptable uh, yeah. to the standards that we're used to. And he was looking at reducing the, what he's putting into plants. And I think the number he shot out there is that original project without even doing the planting was 10,000. Carl thought it would be more. Yeah. Um, I, I, I guess exactly what you just said is kind of what I, I got out of first glimpse of this is like uh, I'm very happy with how this project is now looking relative to what I recall being proposed out there and and i you know, I, I think it's great that you're proposing to do planting i you know i certainly we want to make sure what is doing survives i guess i i don't know that we want i want to like pull hairs at at something that is going way beyond our sta normal right. standard mm -hmm. yep um are we for this particular order where are the bounds do you know the bounds will be on the 35 foot line the bounds are actually out there. Bounds are in, although I think we have to move one from what I recall because one of the lines, the one of the points oh. shifted a few feet or something. But uh, I'm sorry, the, the vast majority of the bounds are, all, bounds are already in. Foot line. They're okay. on the 25 foot. Okay. Um, so, I mean, in general, I think this is a, um, is, is a plan that I can, uh, I can um, agree to. Um, if the white pine is... If there is an existing white pine and it's healthy and viable, I don't see a need to yeah, plant yeah, yeah. a second one right next that to it. Wasn't we didn't know that on the, on the last plan, did we? Right, that that was there. No, it wasn't. Okay. It, it, <laughs> it probably had grown in between. I, I don't really know when it grew in, but it's you know it's it's about seven feet tall and it seems healthy. So. It's a bunch of volunteer pines. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot I mean, right over good. that line. Well, that's good. That's the work for you. That yeah. is yeah. better than planting. It, yeah, so I'm sure it is. I do remember one that was just down over the cusp of the that retention yeah. that's there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I guess I guess then I mean if if um, if no one else thinks that um, 
you know, some, some wetland seed mix is um, essential here. I, I guess I just want to understand from you where the limits of the lawn goes. Does it go up to the 35 line and that's it? Pretty much, although right, um, you know, I'm going to assume in this corner, yeah. you know, it'll probably pull pull away from the yep. 35 a bit again there. because we've got some plants there. That's, yeah. but otherwise, in, you know, even in here, we've got kind of the wall there, so that may that may also okay. be mulch a little bit so, further up. But generally, I would say we'll we'll hew pretty close to that 35 foot line. And what happens with vegetation um, in the area above the proposed white pine? To between that and the trail, in, yeah, that triangle there, yeah. This is already pretty well vegetated. Okay. Um, right. So it was down here where, when they put in the, the the gravel for the trail, it got torn up a bit. So that's where um, we had talked about adding some additional. Well, I mean, I, hopefully everyone remembers what I'm about to say. Um, that is very hopeful plants out there. The DPW department does not want them there, and they certainly don't want any trees next to that detention basin. So, don't feel like, hey, you know, I went out there and there's nothing, there's nothing planted here. Well, it's probably how it should. Yeah. They have raspberry there. It's going to look very raspberry. different by August. I know that. Yeah. And something might grow in, but you know, we don't want a tree growing in there. So yeah. that's that was the. And yeah, I wasn't proposing. I, I just wanted. Ryan. I just wanted to get a sense of when it yeah. does grow in, what is it? Is that yeah, something that like planting is needed or not needed or what? Um, so, um, any other comments about the plan? No questions? No? Um, this is, so again, I apologize. This is a plan change. Yeah. Plan plan change. So what we do is we accept, and, and, some certain cases, conservation commissions uh, get an as-built plan at the end of the job, and there's changes that happen throughout. This is a pretty big change. It says in our order of conditions that major changes have to come back to the commission, and it's up to you to decide whether this is substantial enough to turn it into a, um, you know, a, a notice of intent. For, Modified. Yeah. Augment. Yeah. So. Um, it's usually a plant change. There was planting there. It is planting now. Um, and then in order to not get this at the end and try to catch up on everything, how I've been running this is when things come up, I ask for plant changes. So they're all approved prior to getting to the um, as-built plan and the certificate of compliance, and, and, and everyone's clear on yeah. what happened. Yeah, yep. Yeah. OK. Um, do we have a? So, so th there are kind of two outstanding issues. One, first of all, um, is there any interest um, in including the herbaceous seed mix? No, I'm you think we're going to have some volunteers? I'd be having a hard time in the in the in uh, some of those areas. Yeah. Pine yep. okay. needles. Okay. And secondly, um, what about the white pine in the corner? Um, I think that's good. fine. Yeah. Hey. Let's let's take that one out if mm -hmm. there's already one there. Um, yeah. Okay. Natural is better. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Yeah. And it grows better. Yeah, it's going to survive. It's growing so better. Let's, let's not jinx it. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, so, is there a motion to approve the minor plan change? I make a motion to accept the minor plan change for uh, order condition 270-0669, lot four, Kylie Drive. I'll second. All those in favor? Sorry, I was waiting for Rebecca to say that. <laughs> Keep forgetting. I was just looking around. Oh, All right, so thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for sitting through some of no, the meetings and due <laughs> diligence. So, good plan. All right. I mean, you're thinking of like changing the scope. Like, if John, why didn't they get cool? Like, that's different. That's like, hey, this is different. So, that's okay. why we took that step. All right, thank you. Take very care. Much. Have a good thank night. You. Yeah, we'll see you, John. Bye bye. Actually, can we yeah. ever do like an in between step? My new chair. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, that's we do like an install where we have a like $75,000. It's fantastically. Well, it's really not. So when you're doing it, I saved that. Some people, some people. <laughs>
you yeah, it's good. It's uh, okay, we're gonna you send out a bonus list with a narrative. It's not really refiling. Then they come in. There's a new plan. There's a narrative. All right, let's uh, the bonus list and everyone, Mr. Sullivan, would you so, mind presenting? Um, so we're going to discuss the request for determination of applicability for 65 Fairfield Fairchild Drive, Map 45, Lot 18, um, family name of Kenyon. You have that on the screen. Yeah, you just so you know for posterity. Yep. In case we don't know who you are, go ahead. Name's Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. I'm here on behalf of the owner Doug Kenyon, who cannot be here tonight. Um, while Chuck loads that up, this project um, involves the demolition of a, a, a rear deck, and he's going to look to construct um, a multi-level deck to the rear of the house, and there'll be a hot tub. And they'll be supported by sauna tubes, which are shown here in the green. So we show the number of sauna tubes. Um, there's a wetland to the rear of the site. There's a drainage easement. Um, when I looked at the original subdivision plans and where the, the wetland line is shown on this plan, they're very similar. Um, and the closest point to the deck to the wetland is 44 feet. Um, we're showing a 12 inch diameter mulch sock to be put in to the limit of work. Um, and that's basically it. There's no trees to be removed, uh, no site grading changes. The existing patio to the rear is going to remain. Um, so, in some ways, it's, 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 it's a little bit larger of a deck going in, but it's almost a replacement of the existing deck. It's, it's similar in size and location. Okay. We did a site visit. Yesterday, was that yesterday? It was. It was. Um, and um, we knocked on the door, but nobody was home. So, because of this, we had the RDA. We went around and yeah. took a look, and um, and we saw the existing deck in the patio, um, and we noticed that the edge of lawn at the bottom. Um, we saw the P stone area with play set just kind of off this picture but um, you know the edge of grass we look there to see if there was a lot of significant filling or leaf debris or branch debris in the wetland there didn't appear to be it looked really well cared for I mean there were leaves in there but um, it didn't look like uh, any real egregious dumping going on so that was that was good to see um, and so this is a very small extension of the deck. Correct. Um, one question I had as I tried to imagine the finished project standing on the patio was um, there's grass lawn between the patio and that hot tub. So I guess some of my questions are, is that hot tub raised up on the existing deck? It'll be raised. It'll be raised. Okay, because I was thinking people might walk from the grass, from the patio to the grass, to the hot tub at ground level. Right. But that's not going to happen. No, it'll be raised. It's raised. Yeah. Um, that's why you have the extra sauna tubes. Correct. That's why we beefed it up with the sauna tubes there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so is there going to be any um, like? Stone, stepping stones at the bottom of the steps or any um, I, I don't know I don't know what the, it kind of steps down onto the patio itself but there, there may have to be a, in this location here you're talking mm -hmm. about probably right the patio is part raised well right. no it's, it comes down to pavers it comes down but you do have to step off the patio to get to the lawn right so I guess part of my question was just, you know, what's going to happen with the stairs there and the... I'm not sure how they're going to make that transition. And I hope I'm remembering it right, but yeah. it was just a question I had for... It's a tiny bit of additional erosion that wouldn't even make it to the wetland because of the lawn. Right. But it's just a, a little detail that I was wondering about. I don't, I don't have the answer to it. Yeah. Jack, what kind of... Um, Erosion control. Were you proposing for this project? Uh, Twelve-inch diameter mulch sock. Okay. Uh, I show it right here, right, right along the limits. Yeah. 
got the label on the right side there by your yeah. Shock. Okay. And when is there? A st I assume a lot of that deck and whatnot that we see now is coming down. It's coming down. And you're redoing the so the footings. Do you pull those footings out, or do they go next to them with a new footing? Or how does that work? They'll probably pull them out. Oh, so we're gonna have some big machinery back there. I wouldn't say it's big, but they might have a bobcat, cat. something small. You know how they would pull those out like a claw or something, or whatever they call it. Yeah, if they have a if if they have a claw in it, they could just grab it and it pull. You know, they only go down three or four. You know, they're just below the frost line. Uh, so there'd be a little bit of excavation just to, to get them out of there. I, I would think they'd take them out. Do you have enough room with the mulch sock to do that? Have enough space? Yeah, because the bobcat's small. It, it, it's just a small machine going back there. Okay. So that, that area is going to get chewed up a lot, and and the the mulch sock probably stay away from it. Would you mind adding some? in that spot where it's closest, where it says 26.6, just 10 or 15 feet of um, construction fencing, just okay. to have that. Like a sill fence? You want a no, 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 the orange, the orange the, fence. I just wanted something as visible as possible. They can use anything. If yep. they could just get that 12 inches of mulch chalk, I want it three, inch, three feet high, I so can, someone sees I it. I can show orange construction fencing there. And just chuck more. Do we do we want to make sure that the uh, erosion controls continue a little bit further? At I mean, I I'm, I don't know, quite know where where this goes. I'm just relative to what's out there right now. But well, does it, it need to turn the, the the corner of the house a little bit more? It's or on the patio side. It doesn't look like there's any work hmm. being done. But I was wondering where is the entrance? So you yeah, the entrance. Uh, like Anika was saying, this patio is raised about a foot, this so, they, they, so they're going to come through this area. The the machine. On the, so on that side I think too. that's a good suggestion. The erosion control probably should extend even to almost the front corner of the house. Are they going to have to remove the fence? I think there was a there was a low fence with a gate. They'll have to remove it to get okay. through, or a section of the fence. Yeah. What are the plans? So, how do you winterize a hot tub? Do you drain it? Oh, you can run it through the winter. So you don't have to drain it? No, there's a cover on it. That's the best time of year to go in the hot tub. So, yeah. it's, it's I don't like want to go out they, they in the summer. I mean, if, if, you, were, if, if you were gonna shut it down. I obviously don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you have one, you, you run it through the winter. There's chemicals you put in it. But if you were gonna shut it down altogether, then you have to get all the water out mm -hmm. or, or else it would crack. Yep. Is there? This isn't like a pool. You don't have to, you, you can leave the water in it. It, um, and, and run it right through the what that's the time to use it. You're right. That's it is. It's a good time to use it. So <laughs> I would suggest that we get an operation maintenance plan that doesn't um, show that they're just going to drain it and run the run the pipe or the ho <coughs> hose down, you know, down gradient okay. and into the wetland. Just have some pump that gets it, you know, front lawn so it drains in. I mean, it's not a lot, but still, if you let it drain out on the, and I'm not sure. Does it? Are we talking some sort of chemical in there, chlor chlorine or yeah, anything like that? There's, there's chemicals. So there's like DEP has the standards, like you don't put chlorine in for three days, and after three days, then you run it out onto your lawn and let it turn, seep into the ground. And with the hot tubs, you have to add, it's like a pool. You have to add chemicals so often or you lose the, you know what I mean? Um, Balance. So we could put something together. It's a sm it's not like a pool where it's a large volume of water. but I, It could I mean, just be a checklist. Together. Yeah, we can put together a checklist. Simple. Simple but functional. Yeah. Can you? Key. I, I, I heard that you're going to add something to the plan. Can you just add where the construction entrance is to just say something that says? Yeah, put it on yeah. the side. Yeah. And the uh, stockpile area is on top of the patio. Do you think they're going to? I don't see the need to stockpile. The stockpile area with how much? The sauna tubes are only 12, 12 inch diameter. Well, I'm talking about like all the wood for the deck and the oh, you know all that stuff. Is going to come around somewhere and be? They'll just take it and load it out. I don't see it being stockpiled. Okay. Maybe it could be stored on the driveway. Uh, or well, and part of the... If I was in this, it would be on the deck. And I would just, the patio. And they I can would, figure that out. Like, yeah. Which is nice. Nice.
It just would. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, maybe that's just too much uh, in the weeds. And then when this project's over, of course, the commission's going to want to see grass established prior to it's an RDA. You know, probably, probably to sign it off on this. I know it's an RDA, but we're going to have to have a condition about you know establishing grass. And I'm, I can't remember. Did, did, was grass uh, growing pretty well back there? Or was it yeah, covered in? It was. it was. It was a healthy lawn. I was thinking more. Um, under the deck, are they, they can extend their gravel. Is it just going to be? It'll be crushed stone. Crushed stone under underneath. underneath the deck. I can add that to the plan too. I'll put a note that crushed stone to be used. You could just put okay. summarize this in a letter. Okay, if you I, want. I can do that. These points. Do yeah. you think they're going to do the do the grass? You think they can keep off of it and only do a couple spots? Uh, we had one builder. He actually vacuums uh, the grass when the sawdust gets on it. Yeah, yeah, because it, it killed the sawdust kills the grass in that area, and he just gets it with a shop vac. It was pretty. I was like, wow, that's pretty smart because that that grass is going to die. Well, they're, um, they're losing lawn with this deck. But we have a, a you know a request for determination here, yeah. which is we're going to put conditions on, but we can't hold them to a certificate of compliance for this. Is grass going to be established piece? Now I can write it uh, request on the building permit and say that we'd like to see it but I'd actually like to be proactive about that and have the homeowner know that you know they get really get to you know mess up one area and try to stay off as much as they can it sounds like he has a nice lawn so if it gets chewed up during construction he'll want to redo it anyways and loam it and put some seed down so I don't the building department won't wait too long yeah. for a lawn to come in yeah I um, I mean we could put it in our RDA Right, that you know, any any heavy equipment, any destruction of the existing lawn needs right. to be reestablished. But it doesn't doesn't we don't have any teeth with that. Or you'd have to do well, an enforcement order to, we, after we, that. We'd have to do an enforcement order asking yeah. then. I think it's, at that it's point we can an RDA actually, anyway. Yeah, it's not gonna so, be a big machine. No, that's actually what you're deciding. It doesn't have to right. be an RDA. If something comes up well, that that you feel they can't handle within an RDA. It's the, the RDA is asking a question. Right. You know, is, are they likely to alter the resource area with this project, or are they likely to alter the buffer zone with this project? If the answer is yes to either one of those, this doesn't work, and it has to be a notice of intent. I guess. I guess. What are you getting at with the grass? Do you think it's that that large of a? Well, I was just. What I was getting at was I just wanted Jack to tell the homeowner to try to be on top of that as soon as possible and try to minimize the amount of disturbance that he does because that's going to impact when we can say the project's finished. Yeah, and, and that's all. And I think you'd have a little like it's a deck. I mean, Glenn's going to sign off, but it's not like a house that you're occupying. Once the deck's built, they're going to be using it. And they're going to want to keep this. It's a nice neighborhood. He's going to, he's, he's, you know what I mean? He's not going to really be an occupancy permit. For a I'm not really, like, I, I think you're, I, we do want to bring it up. No, I, I think it's a good point. We do want to be proactive. Um, you know, I, seeing the, the care that they've been taking to their landscaping so far and, and what they've got going on, I think they're going to want. I think I, I, I don't have a concern that it's gonna, they're going to take care of the situation. Um, I think it's good to have it as a condition and be proactive. But. I'll talk to the owner, and then if Chuck came out and saw it was in bad shape, he'd say, hey, you won't be shy. it's unstable, you need to fix this, just as you would on any other site, not that you want to babysit the site. Well, I, and I think it's true that they'll they'll want to have, I mean, no one wants to track dirt in the house. I mean, they get a swing set, I'm sure they have kids, and that's just going to be awful. Yes, I see. Awful. Yep. 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 Well, I know, that's, that's all. I just wanted to bring yep. that up. I think, I mean, my confidence is high that the, Residents going to stay on top of that erosion um, based on the current condition of the property and the maintenance, current maintenance of the property. That seems pretty solidly decent. Also, the grade between the area of activity and the resource area is not steep. Um, and also, there's, you know, easily especially near the construction area, there's easily 25 feet down gradient of the um, erosion control for uh, sediment. There'd have to be a lot of sediment washing out to go over the erosion control and 
down those 25 feet to the wetlands. So I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it's highly Are you unlikely. you imagining that the sediment from just as sonotubes or well, you're from No, just playing rat. devil's advocate yeah. about a project yeah. happening that close well, my, to my head, it was all that area underneath the proposed work is going to be open dirt. And then once it's done, outside of it, the width and a little bit more of the bobcat is going to be chewed up. See, I'd, um, would they, so uh, let me just ask you this. When they remove the existing deck, will they dig up the existing P-stone? Or will they just expand it? will expand it. it but the, the way to solve this might be just put a condition in that prior to removal of the erosion control, that the grass should be reestablished and Chuck yeah. comes out, looks and goes, yep, this looks good, you can okay. take out the mulch sock. I like that. Yeah. You, you make a simple condition like yeah. that and that would control it. Yeah. That's a good idea, Jeff. So I, I assume that they're just going to go in here with a, a rubber track mini excavator. I mean, or, or a little bobcat, yeah. something and small. Especially if it's a track machine, you know, that doesn't make m much more of a, an impact on grass than a lawnmower. Rubber tire machine, yes. A track machine, either the mini excavator or a, a bobcat with a track, especially if they just go in with an auger. They move a little bit higher holes. speed than the lawnmower. Well, it depends on who's driving it. <laughs> and it depends on how many times they turn. Right, right. I don't really rip it. Right. Yeah. So, um, otherwise, is any other comments or questions from the commission? Or any questions from the public about this project? Um, the motion? I make a motion for a negative determination for Second. Fairchild. All those in favor? As discussed and amended. As, as discussed, discussed and tonight. Amended. No. And contingent, of, can I do this? And contingent upon um, the letter, the letter, the letter stipulating the additional protections, the, yep. the, the grass, orange fence, construction the entrance, extension. Construction I entrance. make a motion to include the, the amended stuff. Yes. Stuff. So you have <laughs> the, the grass, the additional. As discussed and agreed to and verbally fence tonight. And the, the hot tub. The, uh, hot tub um, I think Jack oh, just yeah. constantly listens to the YouTube replays <laughs> <laughs> as you're at home doing work. Most people have radio. No, I think it's, like, I think yeah. I think it's mine. Watch town just... meeting, um, t government meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically those four things. Okay, I got it. And I haven't written down again. Okay, yeah. so I'll put that together. I think it's mine's a steel trap. I think he's got it. Still, it's still a steel trap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very thank much. You Thanks, Jerry. Right, thank okay, you. thank you. All right. Okay, um, next on the agenda is 18 Bethune Ave, map 39, lot 226, um, name is Pruitt. Hi. Hello, good evening, okay. thanks for waiting. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Kids have been awesome. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we did, um, Chuck, you and Becky had a site visit there yesterday? Yeah, we did a site visit, and um, I guess we knocked on the door and, and no one was home, so uh, we went around back and we viewed the, the back lawn, which there's not a lot of back lawn back there, but there were posts out which depicted where the pool was going. Or is it the pool and the patio apron that goes around the pool? I was wondering, that was one of my questions. Um, so, but and, uh, we did notice that within that staked out Chuck, area, there Chuck, was a pool on. Do I need to open this as a notice of intent? Is this a note? Yes. Okay, because on the agenda, I'm sorry, it didn't say NOI. It just, thing, it just said yeah. 18, but there. Stand by. Just so. It's, it's, it's bureaucracy. We have to read this. Um, Okay, so we're going to open the hearing for notice of intent. Do we have a DP? We don't have a DP number. I checked, and there is not a DP number yet. Okay. Um, uh, notice of intent for 18 Bethune Ave, Map 39, Lot 226, Pruitt. is newly opened and being conducted under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1. I'm just going to sure. stop so, there. Um, are we going to introduce ourselves? Chuck Tironi, Conservation Administrator. Are we doing Go ahead. that? Michael Flynn. 
Anika Scanlon, Acting Chair. Carl Sikoli. David Panette. Okay, so I went to the site yesterday with Becky uh, Longley, the chair of the Conservation Commission, and we noticed a couple things. The stakes, they had staked this out. There was room for it. There were no trees being taken down with where the stakes were. It looked like there was a great distance between uh, their back lawn and uh, these areas that were kind of, you know, isolated land subject to flooding and there was a couple of them back there one was a lot bigger than the other and we did walk down there and there was a nice path and we well I actually expected to see yard waste and whatnot down there but there was nothing it was clean as a whistle so this so after looking at this project and the fact that it looked like it fit I feel like there were no trees coming down um, my only question was, were the stakes the edge of the pool or were the, was it the entire apron because the plan looked a little bit bigger than the stakes? Um, so now that's, when we get started, I think that's the only question I need to be talked about. And we are on the very outside of the buffer zone. Uh, I guess one more thing, we walked past the driveway to the left, to the right hand side. <laughs> we walked past an outcropping of granite, so our, Maybe not granite, but something. Okay. It was huge. So I'm hoping you can get this pool in. The ledge. Yeah. Yeah. So when they built the house six years ago, the ledge sort of went to the right of the house, and it really didn't impact where the house base was, but we've been warned a few times that we may hit its ledge, and the project may just not happen. But um, we're going to give it a go. OK. But, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, well, I don't, do you know if what was staked out there, if it was the pool or the what? Um, I believe what was staked was just the pool and sort of where they want to put, um, there's like a, a, a patio ledge that goes around it. I'm going to get the names all wrong, but there's a border that goes around the right. pool, and I think that was it. And I think what we're trying to do is make that a little bit bigger. So it incorpor the stakes incorporated the total extent of the not only the water part, but the patio apron around it. I'm not sure if it included the entire patio area, uh, but it included the, the ledge that goes around the pool. It seemed like there might be a tree that would, it was right, those stakes are like right up against where the trees were. Yeah, I, you know, to be perfectly honest, we've talked about it. I think um, there are two trees that we're looking at and we have to work with the builder a little bit and we read the pool guidelines. I think you pointed out to us about five or less and paying the town for that and the builder's all in on that. But I, right now the plans, it feels like it fits where it was staked, but. So the, the trees, you would, so I think you would need to, we need to, <laughs> understand this project including you know all the disturbance and those trees should be added to well, shown on the plan and and we need to know if, if you need to take them down or not I think they are pretty close even if you even if the pool fit so you you if you so even if the pool fits and they are pretty close you may want to consider you're better off getting everything you want to do in on the, the, the one proposal so you don't have to come back you might want to just consider, you know, do you, I don't know what type of trees they were. I'm sorry, How? I don't have these prepared, but you can pass that around if you guys yeah. want. Pictures trees. of the trees? A lot of times, people that have a... I didn't get into that. Oh, well, they kind of show the circle of... This spot. It's a big pool. Mm. So it looks like that is the pool. Just the pool. That's just the pool. Because they've got the, they, they also marked out what looks like this circular patio or what's up in. The Turn it to uh, like a jacuzzi, jacuzzi in the corner there. Yeah, yeah so the, they, they marked out the jacuzzi location. Yeah, yeah. is it just one picture, Chuck? There's a couple. You, you can feel free. Turn it sideways, oh. it works better. So given the ledge too, I'm not sure the pool's actually gonna be yeah, that big, right? They're just talking about you know what our wish was, and so he kind of marked that out, but given what else is going on, and if, we, if we're really gonna put it's in the hot tub, it's kind of our wish list. Um, I expect it to come back smaller. 
but uh, and what what exactly is the so what what's the proposed walkway? Is that going to be pa like pavers and yeah. the, the square is like a patio area that? So what exactly? Is oh yeah, so those that's like a patio area. Um, like we're gonna have a table and chairs there. Okay. Yeah. And then so that so that will be their fence goes. So okay. it'll come all the way around and it'll just be the continuation of the pavers. I think I missed something. Were you talking about the open area between the pavers and the driveway? Yeah. So there'll be a fence there, right? Because it has to be fenced. Yeah. Right? Okay. So that's where the entrance and the alarm will be. Um, okay, so we need to see the trees on the, like even little hash marks that nearby trees to be taken on the plan. Because of the and the limit of fencing on the plan too. Because of the edge of lawn is pretty much the forest line, yeah. Gen like generally, so even if that patio is going in just a couple of feet, then the fence will have to go around that, right? The fence will encompass the whole pool. Yeah. Right. Yep. So. What so those trees might be. So right now the fence would go. Um, so see to the left of the jacuzzi. So I think it would go here and then right through here and then around the back. Yeah. Yeah, so if, if I'm just, just noting that this, if, the, if the proposed patio is over the edge of lawn, the edge of lawn is the forest, the canopy line or forest line, the fence will have to be another foot or so off of that, right? So just, just generally thinking maybe that might be difficult if that's the tree line. Um, it, it 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 does. I don't have the picture in front of me, but it seemed like it was something you could still probably get in. Oh yeah, okay. It's pretty sparse back there. There's the a trees, couple of big yeah. trees like mm -hmm. back in that big area, but the rest of it's kind of brush. And yeah, it's just a matter of whether or not the root zones interfere dig. with the patio. Um, Sorry, you know, save you. If the roots start to get really, yeah. if they start to really disturb the surface, um, and spread out and you've got patio pavers, mm -hmm. it could be you. Nobody likes leaves in their pool. Huh? Nobody likes leaves in their pool. No. Yeah. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> um, I, I had a question about, so where is the shed going to, sheds going to be relocated? Or? Yes. So that will go over near the entrance to the house, I think. Um, or, whatever makes the most sense. So it'll either either go over here <coughs> so when you come in you can just put it up against the house or uh, whatever makes the most okay. sense but okay um or we've thought about putting it over here but um yeah it'll be completely okay. i don't think but it right up against the house you have to be off it from 10 feet or something uh, yes actually the builder did talk about that I'm, i apologize my contractor is out of town and my husband is out of great. town as of this yeah. morning no it's so fine he's not prepared oh, for that we're no, just it's fine <laughs> we're just trying to understand no, no. what it's so, um so i'm sorry so yes so the he did talk about this the fence that goes on the outside on the right side he said if we could get it 10 feet back that's where it would go yeah. So if you that's, walk in, it would be to the right. I mean, I think that's one of the, what Chuck, what you're drawing is one of the most important things on that, this this project that I see. Uh, is this this is right. Just barely inside the, our our jurisdiction. Um, I know. Right. So I guess the original proposal the builder put in had the whole pool toward the right, and we wouldn't have to go through all this. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of like you said, I, I'd rather just do it right the first time and put it where we want so I don't regret it later. And yep. so it does encroach by, I think it was 20 feet or so. And yeah. so, so it makes you, you know, the, the process makes you have to come in here and, okay. and you know, present it. But ultimately, you know, in, in my mind, you know, we're, we're, we're moving it 10 feet. And there's not a whole lot of difference between that. Uh, I mean, I don't have, I, I'd like to make sure that we get the fence on the plan and if there are any trees that that would potentially be removed it's on the plan but uh, i don't have much much else other than that do you want to know what the how the patio is being constructed uh what it's made of or um, how how they're going to excavate or anything like that is that you concerned about that 
<laughs> Not really. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I for me, there's I so just, little square. There's so little square footage that's actually in our jurisdiction. Yeah. I would just like to know if that if there are any trees that have to come down. Yeah. Thinking yeah. about what you just said was what you just don't want leaves in in the pool. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be hard. That you'd have to take a lot of trees down. I don't think you have that kind of room. So you might have, you might want to have some sort of like cover that electronically goes back and forth. That'll keep the leaves out. Yes. Yep. I so, think that will leave. But yeah, the, the trees out. are like you right there. You just added to the wish list here. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. I don't think you can put one in that but, place, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I would be comfortable taking down enough trees to stop leaves from leaves and pine needles to get in there. I mean, that's you know one or two needed ones something like that i mean yeah. this house is pretty close to the as you saw from the pictures it's pretty close to the tree row yeah you know when i first heard that there was a project on bethune i was thinking the wetlands to the right of the road yeah, yeah. right but, um but this is like about as far away from those wetlands as possible but it's still within a buffer zone of some there's other another wetland also. yeah there's actually this that buffer zone is from the large wetland in back. Which is that, a huge... It's pretty big. It's, it's good size um, wetland. It, you back. wouldn't even have to question it. It's got and bush, all that yeah. stuff, just yeah. like traditional. The other one is more of an like isolated land subject to flooding right. um, because it looks like it dries up. It's got leaf litter right. and pine needles in it. And that might be something that might be a vernal pool, but it's in a great spot. And that... that Buffer zone is not on here. Yeah, that, what I was thinking also for this project was what would we do really being in this extended outer buffer area regarding erosion control because the land, the grade slopes toward the, the, the page down side of the house. I mean, we probably have to do something between. Well, it does seem. So the hill is in the back. So I think what we're missing here is we're missing some sort of retaining wall if, if needed. Yeah. Uh, I would not not use erosion control and maybe construction fencing and then tree protection too for the trees that are actually going to yeah. stay. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I would add to my, my list to kind of understand yeah. this project. What trees are going to be removed? Fence, trees. And if it needs a retaining wall for just that little cut that they're going to do in the back. It, it, it does appear that there might be something going on, if not directly in back of the house, but over by where the sauna is. It's out of our, isn't uh, out of our jurisdiction? Uh, I think they, well, if it's outside the jurisdiction, great, but if, if one has to go kind of around the corner. Okay. All right. Um. It's, it's somewhat guilty by association because it's part of the project. So just to get the idea. It's only in by a small amount, but it's getting as much activity in that small, it's getting the pool, almost the sauna, patio, tree removal, maybe a, maybe a uh, you know, a retaining wall, which would be far less than, you know, a second to a foot maybe. Know, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. Any other questions or? We move, move in the shed? Yes. Miss that go on. I you missed that. Yep, so. Missed that, sorry. That's okay. When you come into the side of the house where that gate is, yep. um, it'll be to the right like, along the gate. Okay. So outside of my right. jurisdiction anyway. Yeah. Um, so at this point, we've got some kind of outstanding questions or items. So, so, so show on the plan. Um, I wrote down patio pavers because I, I didn't realize that they were patio pavers. I thought it was cement. Uh, so show on the pan that they're patio pavers because you could just you could just write that on the plan somewhere. Show on the plan the trees that are going to be removed, where the shed is going to be moved to, and if there's a retaining wall, show that and show the fence. Okay. So you you can. Uh, reach out to Chuck if you if you want to get this yeah, list. Yeah, you want or that list again. Or have your pool guy call me. Okay. I think they came in, right? He's been down. My husband's been down. I've been down. We've been spending a lot of time here. <laughs> Whatever you guys need. <laughs> so, 
to get this pool going. Um, I want to dig. <laughs> but you don't have a file number anyway, so we couldn't close. So yeah, I, I want to see what yeah. the, if DEP has any. I mean, I, I don't expect it, but just make sure DEP doesn't have any comments. Yeah, you know, it, it hasn't actually gotten well, a Mike file. Mike Abel is reviewing it. Uh, well, I know, I, I, exactly why I wouldn't expect any changes. But it's always good to have a file number before we actually do something with a notice of intent. So. Well, we actually can't. We can't yeah. file any forms um, on our end without a DEP I think file number, you're, so. the pool person kind of uh, made this plan. <coughs> yeah, so it's hopefully they can get the rest in there and a little bit more. We're looking for details, so we'd like to know what we're approving. I mean, that's kind of what I'm hearing. I it's, don't think it's challenging information. It's just all the little details. Yeah. Yeah. So does it does just getting the plan to you work? Is that how this works? And then so we're, we're yeah. They're probably going to close. Oh, not close, but they're probably going to continue the hearing. So I know that you said no one's going to be here. So I guess I don't think next week or the next meeting. It's but it's going to be continued to the next meeting, ah. and hopefully you can get the changes on the plan by then. And we could. Yeah, if no other information I mean, was needed and they felt like they understand the project. Close at the next meeting if we had the plans to chuck. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's another meeting. And it all the information we were looking for. Chuck, do you right. think this, uh, I mean, uh, understanding that we, we are looking for things on the plan, uh, you know, just considering where the project is and how uh, we're, we're looking for detail, and I don't know that we would, we would want to see that before we close, but you could probably start preparing the the order of conditions for this? I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward, right? Mm -hmm. Or do you, do you want to wait? Depending those details, though, too, if there's a, if there's a retaining wall. But at, at, at what, but at what damage? I mean, it, it's I mean, almost time to feed right? out. What's going to change yeah. in our What's it changing? I mean, if, even if they have a, a one-foot yeah. retaining wall here, what, what harm is that ha doing? You know, we're not, we're talking about a major highway here. It's a wall around a pool. I, I, so, I agree we want to see the details because we, we don't want to go out there when we want to close this and say, oh, we didn't know that this was going to happen. Right. But, but I don't see the details that we've heard or the details that we're talking about getting on here as any sort of obstacle to getting this done. Right. And, and really, I just want to know where, what, where it's going. So, I, I mean, to me, it makes sense that I don't see a change to the order based on what we're expecting to see. It, unless you think, um, you, you think differently. I mean... No, I don't. I, I mean, provided the plans come in with the detail. Yeah, well, no, look, if, the, if, the plans don't, if the plans don't come in, we're not going to. So I think I can get you plans. I mean, he's away, but he said if he needs any edits to this, he'll help me um, remotely, my builder. Um, so I can get that to you. My only concern is every two weeks you delay, it could be a month for the builder, because then he has other clients he's going to start, and then all of a sudden I have a pool in October. So it's nice. <laughs> Well, I don't so in, in yeah. the best case scenario, it wasn't getting it done any earlier because basically what hap happens is is when we close, Chuck then goes and prepares the order of the order of conditions, saying this is what you need to do. It takes a, a meeting for that to occur. Okay. Um, what what we're talking about here is is having Chuck start preparing that so that as long as everything comes in and it looks exactly as we've kind of d discussed. Mm -hmm. It's, it's already ready, as if we had closed at this meeting. Okay. Um, so it, it wasn't going to happen any faster. <laughs> but then even if it does, we close it, and he has the order conditions ready, then this is it 10-day appeal? Yeah, it's a 10-day appeal. appeal. Yeah. So before you can put shovel to dirt anyway. Okay. So that would be at least two weeks plus 10 days. The earth. Yeah. 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 But, I, but I have no problem writing this prior okay. to the next meeting, so it's available. You can start the clock right then. Okay. I, as soon as you get those plans to me, I'm, I'd like to have them in time to comment on them. I send out my packet on the third, so it's the sooner the better. Yeah. Um, and whoever's putting those together, we're looking for detail. Trees. Fence. So I have. Um, Patio pavers, just make a note where that is. The yeah. trees, where the shed's moving. If there's a retaining wall, show it. The fence, and I added something while we were talking. I was wondering where the tree row was. So, 
that would be in you could even say that try to show us where the edge of lawn is also. The edge of lawn is on there. It's like down there. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I think the trees are right there. I think they're just a couple feet. Yeah, I think so. the trees are right there at the edge of lawn. Is it just one tree that I saw in the picture? That well, it's one tree unless we're thinking about leaves in the pool. Pardon? Unless you're thinking about the leaves that will fall in the pool because, yeah. you know, you'd have to have... 20, 30 feet. Right. It's not yeah. that from happening. Well, yeah. yeah. So some people in the past, too, I'm just going to throw this out there, have, you know, especially because this is the 100 foot, we're working right at the between 75 and 100 foot distance setback. Some people have, like, sort of eyeballed, I'm standing over here halfway in your house, I'm at the edge of lawn, the tree's right in front of me, and like little X on the plan. Yep. First tree to remove, and like labeled on the plan. This one I want, this one I want out. And then maybe um, tape it, too, in case we, you know, Chuck says, I'd like to just stop by your house and just like, see which look at them. Your... I just want to see the trees. Okay. You know, um, so sometimes a little bit of tape or flagging. The, uh back on the sidewalk agenda for next week yeah. and if you just put some tape or ribbon on whatever trees are coming I, down so but also X's on the plan tell us the diameter of the tree it's, it's like a treasure map you know <laughs> we get we have to find those x's in the field um okay but yeah i think it's a good idea to draft the order and um and i, I don't see obstacles to this going forward it doesn't look like um, the biggest obstacle I think is underground. Yeah. The ledge. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. That's a yeah. Fingers crossed. That's a, that's a construction obstacle, yeah. not a permit obstacle. No. And they were able really to put in the loam and seed for the lawn, so they were able to get down to certain depths. Yeah. So it seems so like it's in the other direction, but you never know. Kitty pool. <laughs> you got it exactly. They have a waiting pool. pool. <laughs> Right. It's easy to heat. <laughs> All our butters will be happy. <laughs> right. Okay, so is there a um, motion conti to continue? Make a motion to continue. All right, a second. All second. those in favor? Second. Oh, you second it. Okay. I'll second. Double second. Thank you. All right, All right thank you. Thanks, Thanks right. for being patient, guys. Yeah, that was amazing. Jeez. Uh, Jeff? All right. Um, okay, we're on to old new business. Why don't we welcome back? Yeah. So we this have can't be it. notice of intent. This one at this point, right? That's right, you missed the last one. Um, so we closed this notice of intent on the thirteenth. Mm -hmm. Um I'm sorry, did, 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 were you here for a hearing? I was here to listen to the last, okay. last one. All right. I'm sorry I didn't ask for questions. Did well, it seems pretty straightforward. And as you as you face the cul-de-sac, yeah. is it, it's on the left side, is yeah. that correct? Yeah, because I have bought, I'm on forest and I have bought the wetlands on. Yeah. And if, if there's any impact, the, the stream runs right around the edge of my property. And if there's any impact, I'm the... You know, my property is going to be the one that's most affected. Yeah, so her. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you, Chuck, did you want to address that? I, I don't see. No, it doesn't, doesn't sound like there's going to be. No, they're, they're going to do um, the salt filter, salt canister pool, so there's not going to be any discharge. And with the operation and maintenance plan, we have them run the hose into the into the yard not into the back We're, they're not allowed to take it in that direction so other than the impact of like visual impact from the pool and the fact that there's you know it's, um, some new structure going back there there's not going to be anything else and they seem to be pretty good stewards of that back lawn area and into the woods sure. where, where I said I was expecting to see chaos I wasn't sure which house on the cul-de-sac it was and if it was the first one on the right then it's I the second so definitely one. have some concerns <laughs> it's it's right. the second one on the left, left yeah. as you enter it okay well thank okay. you very much all right thanks bye-bye thanks Yes. Appreciate it.
Um, so we received, Chuck, you mailed us the I emailed the commission yes. a copy of the uh, drafted uh, order of conditions for 44 Roman Lane, yep. and I also uh, emailed uh, Matt and Sudi um, the same. And I got a call from their attorney, Jim. Uh, Jim McGrill. McGrill. Jim McGrill this morning, and he talked about several things. And then I got an email from Matt. And Matt also talked about a few things. Okay. And I thought that what they asked for was reasonable. And you have the old ones with you. So we took out uh, 6 and 22. And I won't be able to read them to you. Six and so number 6 and number 22. Part of this plan, 5 mature tree. So oh, no. they felt that um, they felt like they, I, I only asked Jim to have Matt and Susie um, qualify fact that they meet the tree removal guidelines and they did by by saying that they're planting seven trees it's uh, he had emailed me something which I will actually add to the order of conditions where they're planting seven trees for the five they're taking out so I removed the $500 donation uh, because we're meeting it with gotcha. the one-to-one -one replacement sure. gotcha. and the other thing was 22 was um, uh, you know, just my recollection of it was where we would ask the original homeowner if they sell the house to get a written acknowledgement that they have presented all this information to the new homeowner and then get that to us. And Jim brought that up. I said, you know what, the, the buyer's attorney is going to do a title search anyways and then they're going to find it that way. So it, it, that didn't matter to me either, so I took that out. Okay. So that's that's a standard part of our order. Um, but it's also in 2A. So go down oh, to 2A okay. and then that, that wasn't removed. Uh, right. That it's put on perpetuity. In perpetuity. The thing is that that is in our typical orders and rarely <laughs> in my understanding. Although I, I hope not, but it's not always adhere to. Well, I was surprised because I had thought we looked at our original order from six years Before. ago, and it, and none of the, like that order that was two pages. Either. This order was seven pages. So that was what kind of got us a little bit like. Well, that's all of this so it's, it's, legal language. Right. So that so that's like uh, the best way to say it. Just a scenario. That's like kindergarten, grade school, and then high school, college. You know, like the one you got. We have a minor permit. Very simple two pages. We have an art request for determination, you know, elevating the intensity of the project and the scope. That's four pages. The an, you know, we come come back with something that's like six pages. And then the notice of intent application is the most stringent and it needs engineers and everything stamped and signed and we want to hold you to the exact project because you're in an area that we want to protect most. So you didn't have the same one before. Okay. And I and it's it's just an elevated type of permit, just like, you know, as you're going through the grades and, and school and education, it's this is our top permit. There's nothing beyond it for the town to, to produce. So it has all that language in it. A lot of it is boilerplate. And Anika is exactly right. I actually said that I don't remember even getting anyone. I think I got <laughs> one on. once. <laughs> See, it's, yeah. but, it's but good it to is, read it, before you sign, always. Well, well, you don't remember giving anybody ever getting a comment, but, it but you don't actually ever mean them to people take it out. Coming, I mean, coming I, and actually giving it to us. Practically speaking, there's no one, that not many people have sent it to us. And, and the thing about it is, we, you know, since I've been here, there's only one, and actually he's a builder, and I talk to him every time I see him at the counter. He's, there's like one in town since I've been here that we don't have a certificate of compliance on that is a homeowner. And, you know, in all the commercial projects, they get done eventually, and then you get those things. But, so, the fact that all of the permits that I've been associated with have certificates of compliance, so they're closed out, those people are not going to have to, you know, let anyone know because there's, there's there's no issues anymore. Right. I guess unless there's a continuing condition. Condition. Right. Um, 
Yeah, I wish um, I wish more people <laughs> were aware of conditions like that. That, that you they think have we should to leave be it in because it does sound like. Uh, no, I Carol's think would, would be the second person to turn one in if they have a sold house. I think I think after they're done with this project, I think they're even more invested to stay there for the long term, and so I'm. It's gonna kill us. This I'm <laughs> We're gonna be buried right there in that pool. So <laughs> you need a permit for that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you need a permit. So, um, but um, no, we just want to try to. I mean, we've yeah. tried to do things the right way. Tried yeah. to. Yeah. And so that's why I'm sorry we've been annoying Chuck with, you know, little minute details. But even one thing I want to mention is that it says five trees, but Matt said all along it's been seven trees. On the map it says seven. Are you taking all down right. seven or, or replacing seven? Taking down seven and replacing well, seven. That email he sent me said it said five, and he highlighted that, and then it said seven. But we'll have to change that in the order. Yeah. So okay. I, I think that was what the com where the confusion was because I because I said to him, "Are you sure?" And he said, "Yes, it's all, they're all on the map. It's seven, and that's why we were replacing with seven trees, sure, or yeah. shrubs um, combination of." Okay. You can possibly see we sometimes get a little lost in our own details. <laughs> so, there, but yeah, so much, appreciate you so clarifying much to it. I, we just, I just want to like cross all the T's and dot all the I's and yeah. make sure that we appreciate it's that. good that you're doing it. We, we appreciate we need that done that we've got to this point. So we yeah. want to make sure we do it the right way and don't want any no no guess no surprises exactly no. yeah exactly yeah exactly so and that's why too Jim wanted to confirm with Chuck that we needed to so we'll need to build the wall for the <laughs> build the wall. Um, <laughs> Build the wall for the, the retaining wall with the boulders, and then we need to stop and get the as-built plan for you before we can fill. The, Is that correct? So I wrote it in a way because I didn't. I wanted in in my mind maybe you weren't doing both projects at the same time. That's correct. We're planning to do the side yard first. So I wanted you to put the wall in and then prove that. It's right where it's supposed to be, and then backfill and, and move forward. Tip, we do this with a house too. It's put in the foundation before you can start building the house. You have to prove you have to do an as built right at the foundation when that's finished. So make sure that it is where it's supposed to be. So I asked you to do that for the retaining wall and the pool. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing them at the same time, then it, it could would be. be one. But it seems like you're going to have you're going to have two um, you're going to have two uh, as builts. Okay. So I, I got your plan. <clears throat> there, and I guess we can count the trees, which is exactly what you would expect to happen at a <laughs> conservation meeting, right? So here we go. It's been... Mike, you want to do this, or you know, just leave it? You, uh, I'm good. leaving it to you. I trust. Yeah, I, know I trust your one, counting skills. I know there was one up front. I'm going to say this is one, mm -hmm. and I know the two, three, four, five. This was off the property, but that's one. That's one of the neighbors' ones. That's the Dan Miller's. And it's coming down. And that one was coming down. So that's six. And then was there it that one, one in the back? Right, right, right at the end of the wall, Chuck. Yeah. Something right here. Yeah. Twelve-inch maple. Right. Uh, that split one. The oak. That split split one. That's right. Right near the radius of the the right, right here. There. Yeah, right there. Oh, yeah, I don't. I just don't see anything there. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, two inch cherry, six inch maple. Is this, is this the six inch maple, but. Chuck, you want my plan? Well, I, have I, have it. I have a plan. Yeah. So make sure that this is the latest, greatest. One, two, three, four. See, I see kind of. Six. Right there. That's it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I think so. It says maple. Oh, Six TBR. Maple. Yeah, that's one. You're right. Dave's got it. And there's a 14 inch oak near the sidewalk. It's right here. The one near the sidewalk is staying. I think that's. And the 12 inch maple, 14 inch oak near the sidewalk are staying. Everything near the sidewalk was staying. The only. Th okay. That was outside the hundred. It says six one. inch maple. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Thanks, Dave.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I count seven, but one of them is a two inch cherry. Do you want to see what I have? One, two. Is right there, two. And so the two inch cherry? No, it's and the, the six inch maple. Okay, just the, the six, six inch, inch maple. I, okay, know, it's okay. covered up by one, a lot of stuff. two, three, four, five, six. And then this one here. Seven, even though it's off property. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. And thing. is there anything in this notice of intent about treehouse activities? So we asked Chuck about that, and we mentioned about. At the last meeting, oh, I know it came up. Is that why did you see? Is it safe? I just house? made a note. I circled the tree and I said tree house next to it. Just we because it came up. Because we wanted to again be very clear that that's what outside the work do. area, but that we intended to put tree house in that one of those trees. And but you did say it's going to be. Yes. A homeowner tree. This is yes. not those, this is those not tree like house a, guys on, on TV. TV. It's not going to be like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I wanted to be clear that we're doing something outside the limit of work area, so I didn't yeah. want any surprises. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think as you described it, I think that's just a normal tree house that any family would. And there's do. no permitting required for that. I mean, if it's I mean, foot traffic, it's, when these things are like platform, I'm almost I don't, worried I think to say, done. yeah, because my treehouse was a bunch of nails I did myself and blah, blah, blah. I agree. I mean, that's what we're expecting. But if, if you're drilling through the trees and bulting things and... And it, creating a, a path. Something that's going to last the, like 25 years. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I think it's clear that we're not saying yes to that. Okay. Right. right. Like we don't want a paved <laughs> strip. No, out there's there. no, there's you nothing. Know. No. No, we want one of those like rope walkways <laughs> rope from like, rope the <laughs> upstairs window or Swing. something. Yeah. That's it. The ground is lava. Swing. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, I think. I just want to make. I just want you to be clear. I want to be clear what, too. What I we mean, need. What we would it? need a permit for, and what we don't need a permit for. So. My brother-in-law and Matt were planning to build it. So What's your brother-in-law's uh, skills? Is he a carpenter or an engineer or anything? Just really good at stuff. I don't. I. No, that, he's just my go-to guy for like if, how to things if he's work. He's not like a professional treehouse builder. <laughs> he's or not a professional guy. Yeah. Then Pete then, Nelson. Pete Nelson. Um, His name's not Pete. Is. <laughs> no. No. So you yeah, know the, okay the rule of thumb there is is you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. No. No ground disturbance and no damage to the health of the tree, which I don't think building a tree house damages. Trees well, again, I, anyway, I, so. I mean, I can't imagine that this is like, and unlike anybody else building You're the a only tree person that brought it up. Well, uh, well and, <laughs> right? and that, would we be, have, that would be us, right? We have gone into other people's <laughs> wetlands, buffer zones, and they've had tree houses, but, but I think I'm we glad should you have, have uh, the well, carols give us a letter at the end if they ever sell the house that the tree house it's conservation. Yeah. It's conservation. That's, we're putting adding that back in. Well, I really appreciate, you I know, our should candor be on this. The tree house. You know, we're entering we just because window. we've come so oh. far, I don't want there to be, I mean, I think something yeah, happened box on top of where, it. you know, a tree came down accidentally. We came home from work and in our last project, and the the, guy, the tree guy said, well, it was dead. We thought you wanted it to come down. That's why I wanted to be very clear that there's seven, so that when you come back up, when you come out for our pre meeting because you said the trees could come down first when we come off of the pre-meeting and you count the yeah. trees and you count seven but it only says five i don't want to you know we'll go, we'll go by the plan so okay. that's why we wanted a Chuck's good just plan this time and I, I understand well, why yeah. you're being so <laughs> worried i am I'm a, I'm a nervous wreck as always so okay it's okay um so um any other comments about the order of conditions because i think We've got a. We close this. Make right? a motion to issue the order of conditions as amended. I'll second that. All those in favor? All right. Mm -hmm. So that means you have a permit. Yeah. After the ten. Ten day wait. Ten, day. Ten, ten business days. So from. 
So this By permit doesn't have, have two or 22 in it. By the time or the ground falls completely. Six and 22. And you're going to change to seven? Yeah, seven and trees. Two. Huh? One, two. I'm looking at that email because I wanted to get it right, and Matt took the time to write it. But it did say five, but we're replacing seven bushes, trees, of this type and that type. So if it's seven, it's seven. We just counted them out. That's right. But I, I Maybe he was unclear in the way he wrote it out that. He's not here. Let's blame him. Right. You know? We'll just blame, blame him. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So just so I get it right again with the timeline, once the 10 days are up, the trees can't come down prior to our pre work meeting with you. Trees. So, meeting, so our next meeting date is usually is the 10 days, it's 10 business days. And on that day, that Wednesday, you can start. Okay. Uh, the trees can come down and then put the erosion control in and uh, whatever. The and regardless for you of how we're we'll Yeah, there's, um, and I'll, I'll email it to you, there's a pre-activity meeting oh, list cool. and you have to do all that. One of the things you have to do with this, you're saying, oh, there's so much more to do with this one, it's so much bigger than the other one. You actually have to record it at the Registry of Deeds against your title in your house. That was, the, that was what concerned us when we saw all that in there, and because there had yeah. been the discussion about putting information about that prop, you know, that area, like not being able to touch that in the future and stuff on our deed, and that's why we were that we didn't we didn't understand that this had to be recorded with, the, with every the, every notice of intent. Okay, we didn't know that before, yeah. so that was that's why. why just, that's why the notice of intent is, as Chuck said, that high level permit um, and it's based on the nature and extent of work proposed okay. all right so, so I think the only spot I Thank added you. the trees was where I talked about the $500 yeah so yeah. I'll just have to add something other than seven trees are coming down and I can list them and that, that's what, so I'm adding something oh, that's right because we something. took we because took, took yeah. now the, so I'll, I'll and you can list them so that we can just yeah. after the fact verify the well, right, it's on the we plan. can correlate it with the plan. Right, I mean. Well, I'd, I'd like to see it in, in here anyways. It's the, the tree, and they're right there, so we can do that. All right. Okay. All right, well, thank you. It's thank my pleasure. You. Thank, thank you. you for putting in so much time. We're going to miss you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you won't come back any time. Well, the, there'll, be, there'll be a few site inspections. That's true, we'll see you, Chuck. <laughs> you know, you've been well, coming so often. That tree house will have to be involved. Well, thank you. Thank um, you. And I will pick, do I pick that up from you? At um, if you want to, you can come by tomorrow. If not, uh, we'll, we can mail it out to you. Okay. And we mail it certified, so you have to be there to sign. I'll pick it up. Cause so we'll be, here, be here to pop in. Okay. Right. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Have a good thank night. Thank you. Matt thank sends you. his best. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. 16 Border Road. We got a paper asking for three minor plan changes. So there's a house on Border Road and they're increasing the foundation, changing the stairs, and having some bumped out bay windows. So Chuck, did you do a site visit there? Yes, I did. And sixteen board road. Um, sixteen. Is it eighteen? Sixteen. Yeah. Sixteen border road. Uh, I just want to put this on the screen so we can talk about it. That's this one. So I did go out to the site, but no work has happened yet. The only thing there is a file number sign. And um, so the owner, the new owner, passed papers, I guess, the other day. And um, we have a, a bond or a, a note from a bank um, for this project. And it's heavy on planting and um, 
So we went out, went out to the site, and this was very close uh, to very close to the. Um, oh, I should have like these things all prepped beforehand, but I'll get them. I'll get quicker with Mike's help. Okay, here we go. Have you been out to the site, Carl? No. no. It's opposite the mobile station, just almost into Wilburn. Oh, well, you want to work that way. Okay, the so mobile the station. Road, the road on the left opposite the okay. mobile station, mm -hmm. if you go down there. Like yeah, that's right. I know just where that is. There's okay. a house on your left, mm -hmm. a brick house, and then there's a lot. This is the lot. Okay. So this is the new plan, and there's some encroachment in certain areas. You can, if you look at this for a second, and I switch to the other one, you'll notice that the driveway, mm -hmm. the, this driveway area is longer. Oh. There's some differences. This so is this the new plan here? What this is the us? plan we originally approved. This driveway area yeah. is longer than proposed. They, he brought the building back into this area here yeah. and went on top of the driveway. They turned the stairs in this direction and they're going to put a roof above it Okay. here. 90 degrees, not four. And um, there's a bump out right there too. Yeah, right? there's a bump out. There's a couple bump. I wasn't so worried about the bump outs because, but that, but this added a foot and a half. It was very close. We moved it this way so the dimensions were different. It went from like 39 to 40 something. Um, and you know, we wanted to make sure that all, all the sequencing plan was in here. So he he did have all those those changes. I'll, I'll erase this and switch it to, to I mean, the this house one. is so squeezed in there, I don't see a problem it, it's a, with it's the It's a concern one. that um, it's so tight in here. Yeah, it's gonna... Can, can I ask you a question about the, uh, um, the, because it, now it's come up and it's, and it's something that I've thought of before. You know how with um, zoning regulations, the Steps, stairs aren't included. In what? Zoning setbacks. The stairs, steps are not included. Uh, uh, but I they think are. I've heard that, but I'm not the, that, the expert on that. But they, they're not. Okay, well, you are. Then, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so I, I just wondered why they are um, in the wetland, wetland regulations. So it's, you know, why, why there's two Where? different paradigms for that. Because we trump zoning. Yeah. I, and so, I think no. That, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, that was a joke for anyone listening. Because so, the thing it's is, it's not is that, that we trump zoning. We look <laughs> at. <laughs> you know, I, someone, I think there's one person out there going. Yeah. You're going to get a phone call with a letter. Wait a minute. There he goes again. <laughs> so no, we love zoning. It's it's not that. We work with with proximity. To the wetlands, wetlands right. and encroachment right. to the wetlands, so we right. don't give any, uh, any you know, purpose. get out of jail free passes to to, right. to anything on our projects. Right. So in, in impervious and in areas that are yeah. taken up where vegetation could exist. Right. So is most, it, most it, of these uh, Dave, zoning? You no. Know, if if I'm correct, is yeah. a town kind of thing, right? Because we're, we're we're operating on the state regulations, and then the town added a bylaw to help right. us out. Yep. But zoning is just the town. They that, want that's how they want their town to look. Right. So they've decided that hey, stairs. We don't look at stairs because right. I guess that allows you to get a bigger house in, and, right. you know, and a setback and all that. So I can't tell you that it's a statewide thing, but I know any communities that I've worked in that it's not been an issue. The stairs have not, you know, been. Well, been I would say you have to have a way out. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. Uh, um, in fact, at one time, um, uh, my grandfather used to build houses and he used to say that they used to keep the front porch off the house as long as they could because the town wouldn't send you a tax bill until you put the front porch on the house, the steps going in the house. <laughs> so they'd put like, there'd be like the back door like where you just walk in the house yeah. and people would live in the house and they just go in the back door. They wouldn't put any front stairs on the house. 
I've seen a couple houses finished that way. I've always wondered about that. So it's, I just wondered, you know, because some, some, I could see when they're, when they're like uh, macadam and, 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 but like if they're, if they're up in the air and, and there's, you know, uh, non pervious surface underneath and it, I just kind of wondered, you know. So that's why, that. if, you know, so when you look, think of the project, you need to think of the eight interests of the act and then you need to think, oh, you know, it just it's just like a line, you know, hey, right. these are all the, what are we doing here? And shading is something, but this is for practical commission. Yeah. If we have a bump out window, is it shading anything? I mean, I didn't make him do a plan change because he had bump out windows. Yeah. It was mostly because he increased the size of this. Of back, the house. Back here. Right. And he added, he added here, and this is a very tight situation this yeah. is it's hard to get that in there it's shoehorned in and is, i wanted him to understand that, that everyone is this, I mean, on the, we were have we have a process the building department has a process and we're going to be watching him to make sure that he that this thing goes in builds it the way it looks and, and right. it's right it so, was the front because i remember when this came before us the the front walkway was a big issue about a structure or non-structure, what's termed a structure, you know, by the state of Massachusetts, et cetera, et cetera. And so is this, by turning it that way, is that front walkway now less um, encroaching on that that um, wetland swale? Well, I don't think, because here's the 35-foot line. Yeah, And he okay. had to give us a variance for that. Okay, yep. And, and when they did this move, I'll switch to the other one. It really doesn't give you a great look at what we're what we're talking about. It, it looks like the new one is so less of an encroachment. Thirty-six. Yeah. Thirty point six. Okay. And on this one what here, closer or minus. What do we got? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. And that. Yeah. Is that three feet? Twenty-nine. 30, yeah. Thirty-one. So it's a little So it is less. less of an encroachment. Yeah. yeah. But I think he's saying they they widen I think I measured it off here. It's a foot yeah. we both agreed, me and the builder, it was a foot and a half okay. encroachment. So it was that So I think I think he wrote this wrong though. It's consequently the entrance is one foot six uh, one point six feet further from the buff. No, I think he's talking about the bump out. You look at the bump out on the new plan. Do you see it? No, Mike's talking about it's where it says consequently the entrance. Yeah. One point one point six feet second. closer to the buffer zone. Right, because of this bump out. See where the twelve foot is? Yeah. But so that's a that instead of it being a flat house along that side, mm -hmm. there's this little minuscule mm -hmm. bump out, and I bet you anything that's one point six feet. Yeah. And he took. Wait, so he was so he was thirty three feet away, no. thirty two feet away. He was a thirty five foot line. Right. Wow. Right, it's really squeezed yeah. in there. Yep. So now the bump out. But I still see is in front of the stairs. Right. And closer to the wetland. But but also, you know, are those stairs three feet? I'm telling you, they're three feet. Right. And you know now we're. This is a little bit of space here. The other stairs on the other plan were three feet. And it swerved out. out. And, and it was noted. But three now feet. this this has to support a roof and some columns. So I'm it's, there, you know, there's more to it. It was really hard telling him that, you know, even on his drawings for the building department, which I looked at, I said, the, the dimensions are on it. It's bigger. Yeah. So anyways, it was hard to make, make that point. But I had just insisted and, you know, I don't feel like there's any issues, you know, that, but it did need to come for your approval because of this, the four feet they're adding back here, yep. and it's up to you guys to decide whether this needs to be an amended order of conditions or you'll accept it as a certificate, uh, minor. as a uh, minor plan change. I'm fine with a minor I'm plan fine change. With, I'm fine with a minor plan change. I make a motion to issue the minor plan change for 16 Border Road. Second. Second. All those in favor? Nice. Right. Oh, I remember this one. 
Are we, yeah. Chuck, are we going to discuss Camper and Smoothie, or are we going to discuss that uh, in the no, next meeting? No, that's amazing. I don't think ever... It's not on the agenda. I just, it was in our packet. There's nothing new about Camp and I Smoothie that we didn't talk about at our last meeting. So we're still waiting for that to come back from the AG, right? Rice Moody? Yeah. We're talking about the end ramp for Rice Moody that I went to. That's what I reported on at the last meeting. And um, I don't. I think that's what we reported. We're talking about, right? About the what? Were you at the last meeting? Yeah. All right. Well. Okay, well, let's, if, if you don't want to. Sure. Well, I have let's nothing, move on to I have nothing else. about right moving, okay. even if it was in your packet. Yeah. Okay, well, let's. I think that was let's just cleaning up my desk. And is there anything else under old new business? Like, do you want to get into the. I want to get into the. Tick stuff? Minutes. Oh, okay. I have no comments on the minutes. I looked at them. Anyone have comments on the minutes? I, I wasn't here, so. It was a Jim XXX. Well. Um, I, and I don't know who that Jim XXX is, and I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. And That's I looked fine. through the minutes, and I actually listened, <laughs> listened a little bit, and I hope it's appropriate to leave it like that because there's a guy named Jim that I don't know who is. And you, just like XXX Conley and Roberta Nolan XXXX. <laughs> and you no, no, no. The, the finished one doesn't have those in those. So. Okay. Yeah. And you had some administrative support? Make it producing the minutes. We are, yeah, we're having. Um, Glad to see Jackie you. Jackie is works for the town. She's in the town manager's office, and um, she's been doing the minutes. Great. Is, Let's keep that great. going. Yeah. Well, we, we, as you can see, we basically yeah. caught up. And yeah. Congratulations. We're not losing any ground moving forward either. So. That's a, that's a win. Um. Okay, so do, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Um, oh, I don't mind voting, but I'll we have to. Yeah, we need we need to vote. Yeah, and it's administrative, so you can vote. so just do yeah. them separately. We have to do them separately, Chuck. I keep throwing. No, no. <laughs> yeah, we do. Okay. Even though you asked that there was any comment about the minutes, is there any comment about any of them? Right. No. So, I just uh, did you put something make a in motion there to approve talk? them all? Or do you want me to do them? Like, like, well, when you review the minutes, when you review the we minutes, have to give them by date. Okay. you know, you're going to be looking, there's going to be confusion on what we approved. Okay. And I just think to take that out of it, if you just mentioned right. each date okay. and said you approved, it would be great. So, I make a motion to approve the minutes of 9 14 2016. Second. All those in favor? Move motion to approve the minutes of 12 29 2015. Second. All those in favor? Move motion to approve the minutes of 7 22 15. Second. All those in favor? Right Make a motion to approve the minutes of 10 28 2015. Second. All those in favor? Make a motion to approve the minutes of 3 13 2019. Second. Those in favor? Okay. Okay. You want to tell us about Camp Curtis Guild? Well, we, I was just doing this for, for Dave just to say that this is what I was talking about last week. This is a PowerPoint from the presentation that was given at Camp Curtis Guild, and it's the NRAMP program. And when you said NRAMP, I thought that was like a thing, but that's an acronym. Natural Resource Conservation Measures and the Army Corps. And what they need this for is to uh, identify things on the property just like anybody else. And with this, it's kind of like a open space plan for the government, I guess, because without this, they can't do, they can't, I guess, get approval to do work. And one of the jobs one of the things that they wanted to do is, uh, just at the, la the very end here, is they wanted to do this upcoming project is a uh, just a facility for 
what did they call it? I can't really read that there. So they have a facility that they're going to put in, um, I don't know, tracking. Digital training? Yeah, it's not a training facility. They're going to be monitoring something with it, you know, I don't know. I, I, in my mind, actual, it came like drones or something like that, some sort of monitoring. Is it an actual building? Yeah, they want to put a building right there. Who presented this? Uh, it was done by BSC, and they're working with the Army Corps, well, the Army, and I sent you all the information. It was in an email, and I invited everyone out there, and basically what it was, they, they talked about a few things. Look, we have a snow dumping problem here. Here you come. We have a snow dumping problem here. Um, we need to get this under control. We put up a fence. Someone cut in a road around the fence and continued to dump. This area was getting cleared out uh, in preparation for the season without our permission. We come in on Monday or Tuesday and all this work is done. We need to get it under control. Wh whatever town is coming in and treating this like their own. And they showed us that it was right next to a wetland and um, you know, they, they were concerned, but mostly about the access, the, you know, the unauthorized access. And the guy that we talked to said that he does admit that there were some uh, loose agreements back in the day, and he's not looking to do anything but just understand what each town, I guess, and I already told the DPW department, and I said I think they'll be reaching out to you and uh, asking you you know, what's your understanding and trying to trying to work on that. That was one of the points that they brought us there for. The second one was there was an area that was filled with um, sludge and they wanted what we thought about it and I guess I had decided that it was some sort of iron flock and maybe Anika supported me with that but it didn't look like it didn't look like an algae bloom to me. Yeah. So uh, you know, it, I wouldn't be surprised that there's there's iron in there or there's something going on um, in this area. We didn't go to this spot, but they wanted some suggestions. They also want to control their invasives that are in there. Um, they, so they have a lot of they have a lot of uh, I guess upland invasives they want to take care of, and the ones that are in the resource area. They didn't talk about too much, but it was mostly the upland. They want to put a fence around the entire property or fix the fence that's there. So there's a lot we heard from the other towns that were there that the fence is non-existent or has holes in it in, in certain areas. And so one of the things was to put the fence back up. Um, here's the snow dumping and they're just showing us pictures. It was really a main point of the people that we talked to. Uh, they actually made a point of walking us out to it, which was about a half hour's worth of walking. <laughs> um, when they say, so, so like, the DPWs. Yours, yeah. yeah. What's so, it, from from all, all of the towns, or they don't know who's doing it? Well, I, I don't know who, I'll have to say, else is doing it. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I didn't even bring that up. They were clearly saying, you know, they were really saying that they know that, and you know, that Redding was dumping out there, and that there was there was like this, you know, informal agreement. Mm -hmm. And you know, he wasn't saying don't do it. He was just saying, well, you know, he just can't have you coming in and cutting roads and doing all this That's other amazing. stuff. Like, yeah, so um, I, I mean, like, you know. So they were worried about the salt and the proximity to the wetland, but when we went out there, there, there was really not too much to that. Um, this is like a huge bowl with a huge apron beyond the bowl. So anything that we're talking about, you know, sediment, salt, is going through the ground to get to the wetland. I mean, that could be a problem too with a lot of salt in it's it. It's not just salt. I mean, it's also road. I mean, like snow oil. dumping is, is street waste. You know, so it's everything, all the stuff you find. 
yeah. diesel fuel. Well, variety of stuff. So it's got, it's got more than stuff. just salt, it's but it's still going salt, through the so. ground, isn't I mean, usually when that stuff goes to the ground, doesn't Depends. it just get trapped? Depends on what it is. This you know, salt moves. Um, I do know that. Yeah. Yeah, it so dissolves in, so whatever dissolves. Separate, but don't the... Doesn't Redding and Wakefield have an agreement with Camp Curtis Guild about like the DPW actually going there in some time in the future? So, oh, uh, yeah, that didn't come up at the meeting, and I'm not part of that, so I don't know. Mm. I don't know on. So I wonder I don't if our government side. I'm so not aware of. I mean, I I've heard about that, but I. No it's not something that yeah I'm not going, I'm not part of those meetings no. So I wonder if Camp Curtis Guild wanted to, it could become an approved, a state-approved snow disposal spot. I think they can. If they, if they wanted, wanted to, it didn't sound like they Doesn't wanted matter. to. <laughs> they matter. were telling like like they were. They were I know, but if they're being looked <laughs> hamstrung at. by some agreement, some guy made, you know. <laughs> Over a cup of coffee a couple I know, years but if we, I know we told you no that you could always do this, but you need to stop doing it. Their yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure. They weren't looking Redding to and anybody uh, expand else. that operation. <laughs> well, it's good it's, that they're taking care of it. Who knows? Um, it's good that they're taking care of it. So there's the invasives. Uh, black locust, Japanese outweed, <laughs> all those things they're talking about getting rid of. Um, uh, there it is. Readiness Cyber Command Center. That's what that is. Everything with that, that has to do with them is readiness. The Readiness Cyber Command Center. They said they had a good shot to put Just that in. Days. But when we looked at this, it was pretty close to a stream in the back that I can tell you. Uh, just looking at it and based on our knowledge here in Reading, it looks very straight to me. So I, I'm thinking that it was made stream uh, to getting point A to point B. This is a wetland over here. Where's Redding? Uh, it's going to be... I see. I think I see... The it's going to be on your left towards you. My left, your left, right? Yeah, but where's the... My left, left, your right? Yeah. Sure. It's Redding. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Where's the border? Oh. I've got it. Thank you. Yes. You're fine. Nina says it's Redding. No, so... Do they have to come to us whenever they do something? Yeah. Oh, they've got this very uh, hey, in-depth plan. It just seems like that there's a lot. Did you say that they had some kind like of they like know what they're doing? a sludge thing? Do you thing? think this is in-depth? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're paying attention. No, you don't think that, that they... I think they're trying to make their, their camp viable. Yeah. I think if they get this this project or some other project that it just is it's sustainable for you know 50 years into the future and hence the fence and mm -hmm. some invasive removal and things like that um, and then you know how do we control access with the dumping and things like that I mean I think it if you think about it all it's all kind of tied together of you know this has been kind of a wild west, and if we're going to get something in here, we can't. We got to tighten up our borders. So that's that was my impression. So we had this initial uh, discussion. This wasn't part a big part of it. They showed us the area where it's going is previously disturbed for sure. You know, not not any question about it. Uh, even off the site of where other buildings exist now. And there's a road on the, so it's your left, so it's the right, left hand side. Your left hand side, there's a road. Is that right? Yeah. And so there's already access there. I thought that was interesting. How many people go there daily? Do we know? But how, how big is the facility? I don't even have a school. I know, I have like no idea. I don't know on a regular basis what it is, but I know, I, th I think they do some training out there. Well, they do, like my buddy, my buddy reports there for the, you know, for the guard. Yeah, yeah. it's once a month. There's yes. regular guys there that, that they're all, that are full timers, but yeah. there's also, they have a police, Periodic. they have a police academy there. When they have a police academy there that's, that, that's active, there's a lot of people that come in right. out of there on and a I daily think basis. The, the monthly 
training is probably are we hundreds of kids, right? People. Are we talking like 100 or are we talking about like 500? I think the classes are up in the 90s. Yeah, I was going to say 100. That, that, yeah. the, the, the police classes, but then when they have a drill there, it could be anywhere from 100 to 400. Yeah. Reservists that go in there. They come in and out. Don't go, don't, oh, yes. don't, don't go there at like 6.30 in the morning or 3.30 in the afternoon. You'll get a lot of traffic. Uh, you, on that, Chuck, you had something that said, I don't know whether it was an aggregate or whether it was one place, that there was 12 acres of white cedar swamp, white white cedar in there. Oh, I yeah. On the Redding side? Is that where you were talking about? There's no, a couple it's, maps that it's you a, said. It's, uh, Keep going. It was one of the things that one of the, the things that said that. Uh, Wouldn't be surprised. It's it's that whole wetlands between. Right there, Atlantic White Cedar Swamp, twelve acres. It's, yeah. It's that whole wow. wetlands, the whole natural area between them and um, Reading Rifle Revolver. Yeah. So range. they 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 said this was Cedar Swamp, but harvesting of the cedars has turned it into just a name oh. but if you ever want to go to an, the original cedar swamp there is one above the power lines mm -hmm. and there's 12 acres still in existence so that's what that reference was about was that way up near the north reading border yeah it's, it's up it's in north reading and it's so can, can we here. walk the okay. this property that's so where I think a, a Nika. You have to go through a swamp to get it. I think a Nika. That's what I'm saying. Like Nika and Becky were supposed to go up there well, last here. winter. We were, we were, no, Becky it wasn't and I were me. considering going uh -huh. on these power lines. So, so about 10 years ago, Chuck, they had a big who are at so Camp Curtis Guild about contaminated soils. And then where's the camp? Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. These, I mean, all these places. They did. Yeah. And you know, the people I talked to didn't even know about that. So we took down two buildings and then they rebuilt. Um, they filled in the wetland, they filled in some resource it's area, this, if you can see and they didn't know about that project. And then they took some buildings down more in the interior as you turn the corner past some other bigger buildings. So these were just like bunk houses. All of these places have And that was a permit with us. They didn't know about that either. So these people have uh, help. They come and go. Because there was a, was a thing about they found contaminated soil in there. And, you know, they were going to designate it some kind of Superfund site or something like that. And then never heard anything it's since. Well, I think it's on the IP website. That's uh, it's, I could find that. Yeah. I mean, it would, it would have been with one of It's probably got metals. It probably has a deed restriction on it. Right. Um, okay. But it's, the, generally, that's, that just means it's got a cat. Because it's the same thing. They just talked uh, on the news the other day about um, uh, the massive contamination down at the, yeah. the, um, okay. the military site down in, on Cape Cod where the air base is down there. And then it's contaminated the uh, the shallow water aquifer that's down in Cape Cod, and that's where most people draw their their water from. To do um, because most of the places do not have um, a new facility. They don't have either sewer or um, right. municipal water. So they have a problem with cross contaminating their their, their own drinking water with their own septic systems. So this here is a wetland back to the contaminated like soil yeah and it was like that building and something here and something oh, there maybe these two down here that were being removed and right. well it's a lush they, it's a what they do i guess they have a limit of use um and they were just yeah. leaving the slab they were leaving the slab in place and they're just taking everything off of it consider that that slab is essentially yeah. A, yeah. a cap to prevent you from right because there was a guy that I used to plow snow with that was one of the mechanics for the um, for the site there, and they built a new yeah. <laughs> a new mechanic shop there. Send the new guy in because they wanted to decommission the old one. So, Chuck. So I understand. So they're proposing a new facility, mm -hmm. and then and then and then what is our so. What's our involvement yeah, what, what's our in what they're doing now? So our involvement is they wanted our input on these things. They they held an initial stakeholders meeting, 
and we all gave them input on exactly the projects we knew about our knowledge over invasives and whatever else and the property and what to expect and the problems that we've had and then they're going to put a draft together and we're going to be called back to review this draft and then it will be put out for comments so submit the draft to the NRAP to the EA for public review and comment so I think that's going to be sometime beginning of summer mm -hmm. then they're going to hold public meetings uh, 60 day review period prepare final uh, prepare final in ramp um, and uh, public review and comment and then they'll have a final plan which will allow them to present this to you know, it's hard to talk in like I don't know who they presented to but they're presenting to somebody and say look now we have this in ramp now we qualify for any of these projects that come through and we get to put this camp you know on the list of possible you know projects for whatever else that's gonna you know what other other building projects and you know military type projects I don't I don't know such as this one here okay. the readiness cyber command center they want some some additional government they want some revitalization the additional here. training yeah, upgrades yeah. kind of hit these points first small right. scale projects all right well Chuck I'd like to see the when you get the final what I'll invite you? everyone back to the next meeting yeah you have 60 days to comment might take 60 days <laughs> you're not I mean they're only just saying identify I mean identify it's like a uh, it's like a, a environmental assessment sounds like a bureaucratic stage report yeah. it's, it's, it's an environment. Yeah. So so like, what do we so they're not bringing us the facility with the I mean you can't no it's can't, a precursor report okay right yeah, you can't you can't fix it if you don't know it's there. So right. they're just trying to kind of catalog everything that they got. It's like us with our master so, plan. So a lot applying of for grants. I would say a lot of times, it, a lot of these bases have to apply for grants and apply for money, and they need this. We they have this document in place. Okay. Wow. Thanks, Chuck. Well, that was the the second go at it. I didn't even know that was happening, but happy to oblige. So, uh, what's next on the agenda? On the agenda next is, um, I don't know, if, if you want to, we have this, if you want to do the tick, you want to do an update on Let's just on touch tick? on it, okay. because I don't think it's 100% developed. So, I think we got... I mean, it's tick season, and we're going into, it's coming into tick season, it's coming into mosquito or mosquito season. <laughs> and we started to get some calls. So I was talking to Anika, and we uh, Do looked Do you want to specify the call? Like, how do I protect my... Yeah, yeah. Calls uh, like... Like homeowners calling? Homeowners calling and saying, what can I... Call. What can I do in my backyard? What can I do with this drainage ditch? What can I? Yeah. Can I treat it? Can I put something into it? It wasn't a drainage ditch. It was actually it was on Randall Road, and it was the constructed wetland, and it was the wetland next to it that oh, feeds, so people feeds into the brook that's in the back there. They're near they're water or something, but they have a, a they have mosquitoes and ticks. And this person had, you know, identified herself as a new homeowner. She had come from California and was concerned about ticks and mosquitoes and was wondering what what yeah, people do and what she could do and uh, you know so we delved into it a little bit yeah, we, we, we started to look into it so um, so I reached out I just did a quick I had some time so I reached out I, I went to the websites of two specific organizations one is our we are, we are within kind of a mosquito district. It's called the Eastern Middlesex Mosquito Control Project. Like and we are a member town. Or telling Brady, yes. Um, and they have a certain amount of information there, a lot of general information on 
how to control ticks and mosquitoes at different stages of is that protect yourself. And a lot of it's common sense. But there's other things like tick tubes mm -hmm. and um, other suggestions, but not um, they have but is benefits. The, is the and point on how to do it organically and not say just. So there's, there was, there was this list right. that was on the site, and this is all things that you can do keep oh, the grass sure. short, sure. remove leaf litter, prune anything low, okay. keep wood yeah. piles and bird feeders uh, away from your home, keep the plants around with stones. I mean, there's, there's a list of stuff. This is specifically tick protection. This is tick protection, and for mosquitoes. Uh, it's common sense stuff, a lot of stuff you've heard before, <laughs> you know, um, wear protective clothing, long, long shirts, don't stay out at, during mosquito it's time. It's a three foot wide chip halter gravel barrier. No standing water. No standing no water. No standing water, uh, right. Spray, spray your clothes with um, DEET. Yeah. You know, um, you know, it didn't seem like, a, th there weren't a lot of so that that three foot barrier that was new to me, um, and I guess it was because ticks don't like to be on a dry surface. Yeah. So yeah. wet mulch is not what they're talking about. The mulch has to be dry because ticks dry out, and if they cross that border, it that that mulch. So it's like your buffer strip at the end of your. We always ask someone for a buffer strip, and you know, it's the lawn, it's the buffer strip, and then it's the woods behind it. So in this case, the ticks coming out of the woods are going to cross this three foot mulch a gravel. Know, buffer strip and it's going to be dry and warm or hot. Maybe the sun's beating on it and they get halfway across and it's it's hot. Yeah. And it's like you a know, magnified glass. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Like they don't like it. Too. So they were saying for that reason, it's, it's, and it's also a visual barrier for someone to know, hey, there's something out there. Now they said cut the grass short, and I think, you know, that's that's a smart idea. And then that's bird feeders and stuff. Cutting the grass short, like grass like this versus this, that's not one. They're talking about grass this versus this. That's what they mean by cut the grass short. Cut the grass short, yeah. And I'm sure because I can't, you know, growing up in my town, which is it's a little more rural than this. Yeah. I, I don't remember ever having. You know, I mean, we never thought about ticks in the yard. Ticks don't really, ticks don't really travel themselves. Ticks are lazy. Ticks go on. They they jump on transportation. We were going to see it. They go on the deer yeah. and they go on. They go on rodents. I, I, yeah. The biggest thing that anyone yeah, can, that can, that can do to there. to reduce the number of ticks that are yeah, in their yard is have a significant rodent control program. Getting rid of field mice. White-footed deer mice are the, the primary carrier of ticks in this part of the country. Have you ever heard of the tick tube? Yep. <laughs> Basically, all you need is a toilet paper tube, fill it with, uh, fill it with uh, cotton balls, and put synergized pyrethrins in it. And what the mice do is they take Synergized pyrethrins. Synergized pyrethrins. You're going to have to explain to me what that is. Synergized pyrethrins, basically. Pyrethrins are... are uh, uh, yeah. used to be made so back in the turn of the century. Yeah. They were made yeah. from yeah. chrysanthemum yeah. pistols. Yeah. So it was basically a natural yeah. pesticide. So what they've done is they've taken the same same chemical that was in the pistol of the chrysanthemum plant and what they've done is they've made it, uh, kind of supercharged it with uh, chemicals. So the synergized is, is what they've done is they've made it a lot more powerful and, it, and the efficacy is a lot longer because most pesticides are affected by moisture, sunlight, um, and any other um, um, surfactants. So it's just a, a fancy word for insecticides? Pardon? It's just a fancy word for insecticides? Uh, synergized pyrethrin is a type of pesticide, right? There's many, many different types of pesticides, but a synergized pyrethrin is, is very, very um, human friendly. It's, you, you need to like take t tablespoons of it and eat it in order for it to really um, create a problem with a human. what I like to do on so the it's, uh, it's all right. <laughs> but if you take, what happens is, is you take that toilet paper tube and you fill it up with yeah, cotton balls oh, okay. and, and you, and you, um, and you um, cover the 
the cotton balls in some type of pesticides, what happens is, is the, the mice bring that cotton ball and they bring it in the nest as a nesting material. And then as they're nesting with the, the cotton balls around them, that pesticide goes through not only the natural leaf litter that they make the nest out of, but also those cotton balls. And that's what kills the ticks and reduces the ticks numbers. So we actually had those at Town Hall in Scroll Oxford down. when I worked yes. there. Yeah. And they were like $35 for 60 of them or something yeah. like that. They're pretty cheap. That's not yeah. bad. So you don't, I mean, it's not really hard. And, then, and you, just, you just Google tick tube. Yeah. And it's, it's right there. This, this picture yeah. is the picture of a four, four poster scraping, whatever, scraping oh. thing for deer. And it has the same pyrethrin on right. that. Yeah. And it's just delivering it to the host. Yeah. And then. And it doesn't harm the no. animal. No. And it's like. It just. Has to be refilled like once a week. And. Oh, yeah. I mean, around I mean, here we have so many deer. We do have a lot of deer. But the tube just on your. I guess I can't understand where you put the tick tube. I could put it anywhere around just, my yeah. house, just, and the mice would love it. Right, right, like, right by a bush that yeah. they love to get. Yeah, like, I'm just like, <laughs> where do you just throw them in your yard? And yeah, just them. throw them anywhere. Actually, throw them on between the lawn and the brush. Yeah. Okay. And and you're going to get 60 of them. And you got to get them out quick. You, I mean, like, now, next month is the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then it happens again in the fall. So those are the two times. You can't do it in the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, I should so do this right. I'm going to order it tonight. I just yeah, so, so according to the University of Rhode Island's Tick Encounter Resource Center, <laughs> which was in that University. email. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, yeah, there's, there's a stage that eggs and nymphs right. start late March, there's early April. The big boom is coming late March, coming. early April. So it's right now. Tick. Right. Do you want tube? Me? Tick tube. Yeah, tube. I just went to Walmart. Chuck, do you want me to, ju you want me to just forward my information to yes. all of you guys? Um, so there was the reason why we were bringing this up is I was starting to just explore it because when people show up and they want to know what they can do in their yard to protect themselves, I think it wouldn't hurt to kind of have us think a little bit about ways to give them constructive and that will yeah. work for them that also yeah. won't harm the environment. Because I say that's the thing is you could just it won't also, harm the habitats. Sprays can you that you tell can if actually this is put working? There's a there are there studies. Yeah, that's right. How do you know? Um, there's also effective I'm I like to I see I like to see the, I the mean, dead bodies. Like, I don't know. I don't the dead that. ticks? Yes. The dead nymphs? I, I just want to see like yeah, there's there's some action here. Um so then, and then what about the um, mosquitoes? Uh, what are they? What's the so, and I'll email it. So you just got that email. So mosquitoes. I mean, DEP has a lot um, on theirs. Sorry. Bug sprays. Let's see. There's a brochure they have. Nope, that's not it. I mean, they basically say cover yourself and use bug spray. But standing water is probably similar to that too, right? Which is yes. Water. Yeah. Yeah. Lots but there's of no like get rid of the standing tube. water. <laughs> no. Yeah. You're like one of those yeah. loud zappers for my neighbors to hear. Right. <laughs> right. Have you seen the ones that are like tennis rackets? Yeah. Yeah. That could be fun for Pilates kids. Pilates in the yard. Those are good. Be fun for kids. I like those. <laughs> so. Uh, but are you talking about the mosquito magnet? Yeah. They're mosquito yeah, we were talking about the mosquito tennis racket, the one that's charged. That you or the 120 volt. That works for a little while, but then when you, you get tired, it does. It's not so effective. <laughs> so, so there's a DEP um, the brochure on. It uses. Yeah, read the, read that. Um, and and they say the they basically say use DEET, and ca and instead uh, um, do natural repellents work. This is a pain. Um, and they say the they don't provide as much protection as DEET does. Um, right. That makes sense. Follow the so they say, you know, follow the instructions on the product label, use repellents. Don't use repellents under clothing. You know, use your clothes as like a shield and spray the clothes themselves. Where else? What can I get more? What can I do to protect my animals? 
vaccines, eliminate standing water, eliminate piles of leaves, lawn clippings, and manure. Keep animals indoors during That's peak nice. seasons of mosquito activity. Is Avoid turning on lights inside oh. barns during yeah. evening and overnight. Mosquitoes are attracted to light. Apply it's mosquito repellents. Mm -hmm. So there, there's not much different than I've so heard my, before. My, my, my draws me over and two cats in the, they're in Melrose. Um, but they have a one long year. <laughs> And they, they do all the medicines and stuff. So it's, yeah, is this like just this is like just a yeah. slow leak yeah. of that's and so, they live in every urban Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. they say um it actually has a they say you know use repellent, um, stay inside during mosquito hours, which in reading it could be how everything how except twelve to two. Yeah. I already get that um, swamp noon to two o'clock. That's the worst time. It's the best. Oh it's the best time. That's the driest and soon as the lanterns go on, Chuck. Um use netting. Um, wear long you sleeves, use screens, sure. repair screens in your house. It's just a lot of really practical, yeah, practical stuff. Um, right. stuff also that use, you can also use um, a fogging machine with oil. That's very so that was another thing we kind of looked but don't into. Those only, like, don't, does that really last? I mean, no, that's it's it's instant, it's like right? yeah, it's but see the oil. There's oil that you can actually spray, um, and some of it's peppermint oil. It smells good and it actually doesn't affect a lot of vegetation. Some of it does it does affect, some of it it doesn't. But what happens is is that it it um, it it's effective in, in it's a de de deterrent, but it also kills the the uh, um, uh, the mosquitoes that come in contact with it when you spray in it. But then what happens is it stays as a residual on the the vegetation and then mosquitoes that come in light afterwards they get it on them and then they they get killed from it as well and it's not it's not harmful to humans but it's you know there's other things that are that there's pesticides that are called internal growth regulators which they're called IGRs which actually prevent um, insects from basically going from a baby to a uh, a, a, in a adolescent to an adult, so that's another control methodology that's used for not only ticks but also for uh, uh, mosquitoes as well. And yeah, there are yeah. some IGRs that are that are known to be but it seem, human it, friendly. It seems like what most people have used are the tick tubes and some sort of mosquito magnet device. Yep. And if they combine that with, you know, the short grass and keeping the bird feeders away, mm -hmm. and the bird feeders have to do with the mice, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You know, we, and the, then the, but you but you want to have bird houses yeah. because birds yeah. will eat, you know, yeah. both. Well, the birds will eat mosquitoes. I mean, yeah. 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 the best things Bats, to have. Dragonflies. And the chickens, yeah. if you have a chicken yeah. coop, yeah. free run. Yeah. Chickens are, chickens are awesome <laughs> with ticks. Yeah. If you have free run chickens, you're not having ticks in you yet. Free range, man. Yeah. But it's. Uh, you need a permit for that? Yeah. You know, it's. Yeah, uh, that's. That, all that's. Chickens and all that's a permit. permit don't the chickens farming. come with all sorts of other disease? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the <laughs> catch is that you can get a bird blue from it. Can. <laughs> but there's, so. there's a powder you put on the on the, on the the chickens. They don't like it. They really get mad when you put it on them. <laughs> but that pretty I much like takes care of it. I myself. I'm not sure. You know, you know. <laughs> so. It's, um, you know, the thing is, is with the, with the, <clears throat> the biggest thing to do with those <laughs> is to understand <laughs> how they live. Then when you figure out how they live, then it's easy to control and how to kill them. I mean, I, I, I'm buying like $500 worth of tick and mosquito <laughs> stuff tonight, man. This is I'm awesome. Amazon and I'm, 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 I'm loving this mosquito so, trap. So, so we're gonna line my this one's better than tick This tubes. one's not as ugly as that other one that, that I was That's just looking at. I know, you got, a, you got a reputation to uphold there. <laughs> <laughs> you're that in a, a little, your little cabana. <laughs> So, but I mean, more bat boxes that might help. Yeah, um, no. I'll tell you the best, best, best. Uh, other than you know the thing that goes, you know the the thing that that uh, electrifies them. The best mosquito control device I have ever seen is it's a box that you put on the side of your building. And it's about that long and it has three um, fluorescent tubes mm -hmm. that are inside of it. 
and it's got a fan. That's what I'm looking at right here. It's got, it's got, it's got, it's got a, like a, it's got like a, 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 a rectangular tray inside of it, and you fill it up with like two inches of water, and you just take a couple of drops of Dawn dishwashing detergent, and you put it inside. Yeah. And you turn that thing on. It's got the, the flush. The, the light. The black light. The, the purple light. light and the UV light. It's a UV light. And the, and the mosquitoes come in. They come into that. Same thing as the electric thing, but they come right in, and what happens is that the fan sucks them right down into that, that water that's got the dishwashing detergent in it. Um, I used to have one. I have one of those in my backyard, and I used to go out after one night with a really bad time, and it would be like pudding in that rectangular tray. That's how many bugs would be inside that tray. Not just mosquitoes. One-third. Uh, everything. I don't want to know where you dumped the tray. <laughs> Flush it. In my compost um, pile. I was saying, that's the best compost there is, right? Well, yeah. I don't know. I think I'd go with the other one. I'm, I'm, I don't think I'd want to wake up in the morning and look at a tray full of I know. Yeah. Well, mosquitoes. What's the other one? A mosquito magnet. It mosquito, fries them. Yeah. Mosquito magnet? No, mosquito magnet so is like a... Fry them? It's a propane. Yeah. Like it... Here, here's Cooks the one them. that... It, it produces carbon dioxide and yeah. attracts them. Yep. And that just There's stuffs one. them into People a bag. People have done that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It, if you just went outside, <laughs> I can't, you do, have, this my, I can't have this in my backyard. Come it on. takes a half acre. Yeah. Take care of a half. The acre. one that I was, the one that I just sent says. It, it, what is mosquito magnet then? Uh, this is this has got to be like a whole block. Six hundred dollars for mosquito <laughs> magnet. <laughs> mosquito magnet's very expensive, and and you know what? It also uses a lot of propane. Yeah, I'll go with those. This, I'll go with the. You got to buy propane all the time. Yeah, it's just like no, that. really, you really do. It uses a lot of propane. Oh, I had, yeah. I had one of those things. Covers up one yeah, acre. I saw that one too. I don't know why. It's not bad. Yeah. That's pretty good. They do, they do work. Okay, one effective acre of mosquito-free um, living. I, I don't know that I want just propane. Uh, no. Naturally emitted from no. some machine in my backyard. They got tiki torches at Walmart. Those You're not going to win. There's no solution. That's. No, Mike, like, oh, if you, if you go out in the yard, it's like you just chemistry. don't breathe. You breathe. Get... If you don't breathe, the mosquitoes are not going to find you. You just hold your breath. That's true. They're not going to find you. Happens. <laughs> so, 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 at the, um, yard, so at the East Middlesex Mosquito Control District, um, so they're the people who coordinate the, the aerial spraying, and the, we get letters from them. And Anyway, um, but they had some idea, they had some pesticide information, um, some of the pesticides they use, and one of them, one those of them. Those are the guys you're worried about. Yeah, yeah. those are the ones we're most what worried about. That's ticks. Because you can't see them. Yeah. Tiny. Yeah. Real problems. Like the size of a sesame seed. So anytime. Half the size. Yeah. I can tell you. Wow. So um, they gave some pesticide information and. There was one pesticide that was pretty low toxicity and low risk, um, but discussing it with Chuck, you, you know, it's not something that we would recommend for use in every application. We didn't recommend it because um, Mass Audubon didn't recommend it. It would interrupt the food web right. too it's much. Of vernal pools. What was it? It was BTI. No. Um, what's the actual name? It's just called BTI. It's a mi microbial insecticide. Bacillus thuringiensis. Like it's a, butchering it's a, that. It's a, it's a rod-shaped bacterium which releases a toxin crystal when it reproduces. The crystal is only toxic to mosquitoes, black fly, and a few related species. So. Um, so they're saying it's highly specific. If it's applied directly um, in the habitat, you know, it's, it can be have a real targeted application. It doesn't have a toxic residue, so risk to groundwater is low. It's not volatile, um, and they say it's harmless to beneficial aquatic organisms, including insect predators. In other words, if they eat the mosquito infected mm -hmm. with this, they're not going to get sick. But it also interrupts, as Chuck was saying, it interrupts that food web. So, especially in a vernal pool, which is a feeding ground and a nest for the suggestion was to do it, features. you know, outside of the season of the vernal pool, which, as we just talked about, isn't the optimal time to be putting out tick tubes and and you know 
I guess right. you can get your mosquitoes at any time, but right. um, this and then and then the pellets that they have or the biscuits that they sell. It seems to me that there Donuts. was some different information on that. It was a, did it take care of a hundred square feet? Did it take care of you know uh, less than that? Was it good for a month? Was it good for three weeks? And it seemed to me the breakdown of biomata actually uh, you know made made it not as effective as it would be in someone's pond. One of the things they mentioned a lot, and I think I've read it throughout uh, checking into this, was and, and there's not many, there's probably a, a ton around, but I, I don't see too many, but tires or anything like a tire that would hold water, water. needs to be emptied. Yep. And that's, you know, one of those bread and butter things that everyone can do around their house. Like empty the sand pail, empty the, you know, whatever, the, the watering bucket for the plants. Just make sure that those don't have anything in it. And I think if you had a rain barrel, I mean, that PTI might be something yeah. for it. Did you get back in touch with her with some of these, some of this feedback, or, you know, maybe we need to just kind of keep discussing I was gonna things that we think are good for certain times of the year, you know, because these, these, a lot of these approaches have really specific time frames and are. I think work it came up with the same month. feedback that, um, that I told her on the phone. I, I was reluctant to. Um, tell her that PTI was something that I would have, you know, I would be comfortable with. Uh, you know, definitely licensed applicator for something like that, but the, but the tick tubes and the, you know, the mosquito magnet and the, uh, the fan abrader, I think that would, that would be fine. Yeah. So those are two solid approaches that we can live with and we know are not going to have a, a direct damage to the environment. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I do think you get a positive result from the tick tubes. And, the, and I was going to say the four poster. Um, That's got me in like this rat hole of <laughs> Malaysia homemade mosquito Well, pictures. I mean, I, you, you got to know that with. So this, this with the deer, oh, tra attracting changing. the deer it's is changing. actually not legal them doing because that? you're baiting mm -hmm. so I don't think they've gotten around that um, I did call Mass Wildlife and I was uh, intended to ask them about this before our meeting tonight but I didn't get a return phone call this would be very interesting like um, if we put them up in conservation land you mean yeah yeah and also, this, what army of funds to <laughs> To pay for, put sorry. The, put the hunters in there. Right up the hunters. Well, we could, yeah, I have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of ideas about renting. Okay. No, I, I don't know what we could do about the funds, but I, I think that um, the hurdle of, you know, putting it out there for, for this purpose and not to bring in deer so you can, you know, hit during hunting season would be something else. Because, I don't know. Dave, help me out here. If you put this out, even if it's not hunting season and you stop baiting it, they're still coming there, right? That's, it has to be, a, if you put an attractant out, you have to be hunting over it in order for it to be legal. If you're not hunting over it, it's not illegal. Baiting is a baiting. These things aren't allowed because of the hunting problem and the yeah. baiting problem. Yeah. The baiting, last time I baiting, looked into them, there was, baiting, it was clear. Hunting over any baited um, in most states is illegal, but you know you can actually, you can actually, I can go out and I can put a pile of apples out in the woods right now because it's not hunting season. Mm -hmm. You can attract other animals and deer and so forth. You don't want you to do it because then you artificially stimulate the the diet of the animal. Um, it's it's something that's. Uh, I still uh, don't really want you to do, but I can find out. I, I know the uh, looking at, looking up. It's because uh, that would be interesting to uh, find out. From, uh, Mass Wildlife. Um, the guy's um, name is um, David Steinbrook. He's the uh, the deer moose project leader in the state of Massachusetts out at Mass Wildlife out in in uh, in. Um, on Westboro. Yeah, 
so maybe we can add to this at the next meeting and um, and uh, yeah, I just put think some them. information on direct someone to some information that's on the town website which I'm not sure if there's any at this point okay. that's one of the things that, that uh, the uh, Italian lady that lived next to my uh, wife's aunt she used to keep olive oil in a spray bottle it's sort of like mosquito repellent. It's garlic, right? And anything that had water in it, she just spray it. And when the mosquitoes would light on the water, they get stuck on the water because of the, the olive oil. And if there's any eggs in the water, they actually, it actually, the eggs drowned. They can't poke through the surface tension of the oil on top of the water. So they suffocate. And they never, they never hatch. That's pretty, they do that in restaurants too now they do the yeah. the same thing the cup the straw the cellophane the straw through it yeah if you eat a clove of garlic it's homemade it won't bite you yeah and it's and it's oh, you gotta go to work tomorrow so you please no five more minutes and then you put shit down no, no, I'm, go, I'm going home i'm pouring a Was there big else? glass of wine and i'm looking on the <laughs> i really let me know if you're getting a deal on that yeah 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 yeah. A if we did a group, right? yeah, is there a group we, magnet deal? Um, any other, anything else? Otherwise, we can take some rest. Make a motion to adjourn. A so second. All those in favor? All right. Meeting is adjourned.